Welcome back to the Merch Podcast. Uh, we're just going to moan about the comparison between English and American electronics, I feel. I'm 50-50 I'm on them right now. All right. Could go either way. Let's go. <laughs> what, dude? Yeah, this guy peed himself on the fire how it's, mi- it's mixed in with the paint. It looks like shit. Yeah, how much of that just went over you? That yeah. was a lot. It no, looks like you, you got a dribble going. Did you get that, Boogie? Oh, you're doing it on your jacket now. Keelan yeah. just pissed, pissed tea. Is it coffee, tea? Pissed tea. Uh, you know, hot chocolate, it. I think. Oh, oh nice. No. All over himself. Um, <laughs> welcome back, Merch Podcast. <laughs> it's hot chocolate. It, I think it is not. No. Oh, what I is it? Coffee? I thought you were having hot chocolate. It's coffee. It's a little baby. Merch Podcast, <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> We're here for a probably a slightly off the wall one with uh, Davis Vasconcelos. Hello, hello. Is it Vasconcelos? Yeah, Vasconcelos. Yeah. Celos. 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 Vasconcelos. I feel like it's, it looks like an intimidating name, but once you know it, you're like, okay. It's fucking nice to say, bad. to be honest. Whereas, like, what's Seth's surname? Ruji Ravi Riopinio. Yeah, that what? is. What? It's um, not just Ruji. No, oh, it's Ruji Ravi It's Ravi amazing. Ruji. Ruji Ravi Riopinio. That's awesome. It's when so they say sick. NAPC, I'm like, that's a sick surname. Yeah. yeah. And it's an, it's kind of like Vasconcelos where it's daunting and then you just- You learn it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Not like Ryan. No. <laughs> oh, that's just- Ryan. Never even Ryan. tried that one. Um, <laughs> I'm going to try Ra- it. Ryan. Ryan. Can we, can we go into the, the UK versus- like, Yeah, uh, uh, I was getting excited oh, yesterday. Straight in? Davis, Davis came out the toilet yesterday and he was like, UK toilets are so fucking weird. You've got all this shit. And we started a debate and then we were like, we need to just pause mm. this for today. To uh, be fair, I didn't say the toilets were weird. The you said toilets appli- the, bar- the, the closest bathroom. fucking- You said appliances. Well, Callum, I was at Callum and, and Sasha's and they have two toilets. Whoa, big money. Well, they have a what? toilet and then- what do you mean? Like another one, but it's like a sink, but at butt height. A That's a bidet. Day. A bidet. A bidet. Oh, no, a bidet is in the toilet and it comes nah, out. Nah, nah. For some reason in, I don't know if it's just the UK. I thought it was like a foot shower, no. maybe. Yeah, I've washed my feet in those to be fair. But you that, can't shit in them, can you? No. The design no. of those is you're meant to then, you know, go from the toilet and then squat over that and splash, splash. Okay. But I don't know That's when weird. or why they appeared. Surely that'd be so uncomfortable. Yeah. Have you tried it? it? I've tried it, yeah. I'm, is it not just all like wet and you have to yeah, use a towel yeah, yeah, yeah. then? And well, an like, actual bidet at least is like, like the first time I was like used a bidet, it was a surprise. I didn't know. And then <laughs> oh, I like, really? was sitting there like, that was a good poop. And then I was like, whoa. <laughs> See, I knew it was warm water too. And I was really? Like, yeah. I, I, she was like, I'm going right to out here there. for a Mate, you can it aim. Off. It was, yeah, because I was loose. I wasn't ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now knowing I, I, I you know. Are they common I, around you? Again, no, it was a surprise. It yeah. was like at my friend's house and his parents are like pretty wealthy if i if i had the money i would so when i went to japan with stora like that we that we had one in there was one in the airbnb they have them everywhere like even the like you know the supermarket across from the house in cranbrook mm. that style supermarket if it had a toilet they would even have like you know heat a toilet seat with a little button to make noise to cover up the sounds like what like birds or whatever and it had wow. a, and it had a thing and i was like fuck it i'm gonna try this thing and it Honestly, is life changing. Yeah. Really, yeah. It's just, it's. Does it make you want to go for a shit? You kind you get of get sad when you don't need. Not a from shit. like a pleasure perspective, but because you know it's just going to be like it takes all the stress out of a poo. Mm. We always talk about shit at the start of a podcast. Yeah, how yeah, you never know, like, if you got it all. Yeah, never. I mean, I had a moment in elementary school where I thought I was good, and I went back <laughs> to class, and I missed a big spot. Wow. What, when I, you were wiping? Yeah. <laughs> I think I got some of my, like, pinky finger or something. <laughs> and it was like, thought I was good, went back to class, and I was like, something, I smell something funky. Oh, oh no. And I kind of, like, under my desk, I was like. Oh, no. What did you do? You just kind of, yeah, like. I mean, I was, like, fucking wipe eight it. years old. No, I was just like, I got to go back to the bathroom. And she was like, really? And I'm like, yeah, really. <laughs> You know, just, yeah, what, what do they call it? A, 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 oh yeah, just a pass. The pass. Yeah, you like, get a pass. Make sure I grabbed it with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. God, have you never shat yourself in school? Oh, uh, mm. yeah, I've shit myself. I Not shit. in school. Yeah, I've, <laughs> yeah, I have stories about pooping myself. I have a like a inside joke with like myself and my sister. She probably would be so mad that I'm saying this. Myself, <laughs> my sister, and like my best friend Jimmy about the fact that we definitely poop ourselves into adult age but like like right around like mid 20s are we starts. talking about like l- log in it or no, like, 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 like sharp yeah yeah, yeah. yeah or like a, it's fine. 
Or like a, like one time I made like a brisket with my friends and it was like a 12 hour brisket. What is a brisket? It's Glad just you like asked. A, I don't know <laughs> what exact cut of meat it is from a cow, but it's like a giant cut of meat with a big slab of fat on it. And you basically, you cook it, you slow cook it for a long time. Yeah. And it's just like, it's like classic barbecue. Okay. Okay. Um, but we definitely overcooked it to the point where the fat was just like went, rendered off. Went straight through you. And I remember the next day we, we had it and then we all like, got, I had friends visiting and then we like had a bunch of drinks. And the next day I woke up a little hungover and I got up and I walked to the bathroom and on the way to the bathroom, there was just a moment where I wasn't consciously clenching my asshole. And it, and I, the pipes were greased. Yeah. And my yeah. friends were like, yo, good morning. Like, you want to grab breakfast? I'm like, give me a sec. I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm gonna go shower. Well, Keelan, okay. you had a you had a scenario with uh, cashew nuts, didn't you? Yeah, I was eating oh, fucking yeah. loads of them. He went and through I a period where you. he was eating like a bag, like a big bag, like a sharing bag of cashew nuts. What? Just day? to myself. Yeah, that's I'd expensive. Fucking, yeah, that's, that's expensive. Fucking expensive. But yeah. I fucking loved them. And then I yeah, I'd keep shitting myself basically. And he was like, he was getting <laughs> glitter like shit. It took more than it took more than one shitting yourself. <laughs> I didn't know what was I wrong with me. Shitting. Honestly, I didn't. He was getting I, really I actually concerned. spoke to Giles because I was around his house, and when I went and had a shit in his toilet, it was glitter. It was oily. Like he it was sparkly. He literally came out, and he was like, "This keeps happening. I don't know what's that wrong with me." There's no way that was the cash. Glitter. No, it was. It was because of the oil and all that. It's so oily, yeah. nuts. It like but like, I thought I was dying. Yeah, and, and I and then you. I suddenly was out. like. Like I came out of the bar, like I looked at the fucking, cause you, you flushed the shit away, but the water were like, there was like a film of oil on it. And I was like, what the fuck is wrong with Keelan? And then I sort of like looked over and he's just chow, like continuously chowing down. I was like, Keelan, you're eating a bag of cashew nuts a yeah. day. You came out of the bathroom, you're like, something's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> back, back, back doing it, yeah. Just fucking ripping him apart. Yeah, I stay away from those yeah. people. Anyway, speaking of, uh, I, I want to get back on this <coughs> appliance thing. Appliances because thing. we started oh, yeah, the conversation we literally yesterday. didn't talk about yeah. it at all, other than the bidet. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's just like a lot of weird appliances in British culture that I don't get. Mm -hmm. I mean, like you have light switches. And then you, <laughs> you can get outlets. those. No, in America, they you, have candles. Yeah. You have really good light switches. I will, England wins the light switch fight. Sick. Flat out. First round knockout. <laughs> But Does that include you, the pulley ones? Do you like those? Or don't do you get kind of, it. I like it. Don't get it. Don't why get it. is it in the bathroom you have a pulley? I don't know. There must be a reason for it. Oh, I quite like I know, it. I know why. It's really? because it must be to do with getting the electrical sockets away from the water source. So uh -huh. you have... Because in, in bathrooms, typically, like, yeah. you can't have, like, a... You have to have certain light fixtures and things. Mm. Whereas in America, they probably don't care. Like That just seems like you don't trust your, your plumbers. Well, I think it's more you don't trust the electrics. You try not to mix water and electricity. Mm. I don't know, you know, but um, but I mean, surely it's not that offensive to pull on a little string. Oh, I don't, I don't mind. Yeah, it's my question fun. is more of is it's less of a direct criticism of the the concepts. It's more of just like I'm trying to figure out why. Like you have again normal light switches, and then your plugs have light switches. Yeah, and so like, we can turn them on and off independently. <laughs> what do you mean? But just Wait, don't do plug not? it in. Yeah, but then you've got a plug sitting on the floor. Now it's plugged in and it's chilling there. It's out of the way. My daughter can't stick her fingers in it. Oh, well, your daughter can't stick her fingers in that to begin with. I will give you guys, you have the second best plugs in the world. First is EU. I actually Why disagree. EU? Do you, EU, EU is, is so too, satisfying. there's two round ones. It's not as, yeah. it's not as like, it's not stable solid. as well. We're earthed. It's definitely more stable. We have the most oh. solid plugs. Oh, it's just nah. straight yeah, in. Nah. Sometimes it's hard to take them back out. That's, yeah. Where here? Yeah, yeah, that's Something not a good thing. I want to be able to, I want to be able to yank that thing out. No, and it, it, I'm on my way out to a to a date. You clip on American. I'm charging my phone. I want to get be able to go fucking. America's too much. No, but now. we have grips on the side. It's chill. Like that iPhone one down there. You could just grab that and pull See it out. See the little grips. Oh, that's nice. Make it in there. Go on, get in there. Like you just pull it out. Can I? It's not. It's yeah, it's yeah. technically plugging in the on air light that yeah. isn't on. Oh well. You don't need to turn it off. No, like, it's there's, there's a there's a button on the side. Oh. Um, there you go. Big, big. Don't get blinded. Right, well, I, pressed it, I pressed it again, so it's going to go off in a second. No, it's a, a bit of a shit button. Um, you also didn't like the heated rails. Again, it's... It, no, you didn't I, like them. It's not that I don't like them. I just don't... No, you were freaked how out. How the fuck do you turn them on? Because there's Well, like you, can't, you can't moan about that and then moan about having plugs that are turning off and on. Yeah. But I don't and then need you don't... to turn that off and on because the button is here. Like, that added confusion. I tried to turn it on down there, and then you're like, no, the button's on the thing. And I'm like, oh, yeah, like every other device that has a button on it. 
Why doesn't the the heater thing just have? But a do you not have central heating in America? Like pipes in your walls that heat your radiators? Some of us do. <laughs> I'm a working man. I don't know if I do actually. Uh, you know what freaks me out is American houses and the fact they're all just built out of like they're all just made out of wood. And then you have these plugs. Yeah, you because have these- in the '80s there was this thing called cocaine, <laughs> and construction people wanted to be able to afford that, so they made houses really cheap. Wow. wow. Is yeah. that is that it? I mean, that's not it, but it is like that's it's America definitely like laid for out. my friends and I in California. It's like an ongoing joke because we'll be like working on the house or like fixing something. And be like, wow, this was made like garbage. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I, I have this memory of walking, staying at Jesse's place in LA a few times over like a few months. Like I, for when we we're doing off the edge, I was out there and then I was home and then I was out there again, uh, and seeing basically a full set of houses being built in the space of like three months because oh, yeah. it was like foundation wood slap some walls up done and i was like what the f-? like where's the fucking shit that doesn't burn down like it's terrible and then you have these yeah. bug sockets that you flick and they start sparking because they come loose yeah and and yeah it's terrifying no america is a scary uh, place can't you have people hiding in your walls as well yeah you get cruel spaces yeah. right that's like a weird amount of times that that's happened it, i don't know if it's just north america the but stories like, of people living in yeah and they yeah. get like baby cams in their kitchen and like some lady crawls out of their cabinet and i'm like oh, that's so that's sick. Sick. Also, like it, that's it's definitely cool. very like telling about how people's relationship with their homes in america that there's another person there that you don't know about i can imagine <laughs> bloggy living in some of these walls like, they I'm have, like, no, they have like, no idea you just like you come home from work you're already checked out before you get in the door yeah you're yeah, in yeah. beer dinner Couch, beer, and that shower, person's, bed. That person's been in your house all day until and they know you they come home. They live in your house more than you do. Yeah, you come home at four and they're just back God. in their little cubby hole. But I, I could imagine Bloggy in no. a hot... Not, not like a shit one, but like a really bougie <laughs> no, one. No, that's, that's humiliating. And you, no, no, no. There's no dignity with that. No, I mean, you like you, you like show us house you show us round and it's like a labyrinth of tunnels and you've got like fucking lights. <laughs> like the Mez, the top <laughs> of the Mez. I honestly think that's where I draw my line, you know. But I, it's I like, would rather live like... On the street, it's like seductively the like tunnel, like going too oh. far for him. <laughs> you like really made it bougie. Mm. What today is just the day that people are trying to ring me. Mm. Are you getting calls? Yeah, I'm a fucking busy man. Um, what other appliances? I mean, my here's the thing with the the towel heater. Here's the thing: is I thought it was a towel heater. This is first. this is what in England we have like you know heated towel racks that the radi- if they're just a radiator with slots in them that you can hang your towels on after you have a shower. That's yeah. it. That's Davis is stunned. I just don't get how to turn it off and on. You don't. Okay. Do you but turn the mine, sun? I off was and on? no, because I was in my hotel room in in Brighton, and there it was cold. It was just a cold metal rack, and there was a twisty knob on it, and I turned it on, and it never got fucking hot. Yeah, because that's the central heating. The twisty knob is just to regulate like the water. If if it was if the central heating was on, if the if the hotel was being, I'm gonna heated, get irrationally angry about this. One. If, if the hotel, <laughs> if, if the ho- like irrationally angry. Yeah. Yeah. If the hotel was being heated, that twisty knob you could control the temperature because that controls like what's going on. Okay, so you only get dry towels in the winter. That seems bullshit. Like, but it's <laughs> no, it yeah, like you turn it on. I'll turn Bloggy's mic up. What do you say? You can get electric ones. You can, yeah, yeah, yeah and you can. Most times I've had them in my properties I've lived in. They've been electric in your you just, in your walls. Your holes in the walls. <laughs> <laughs> like in the cottage I had, you just turn it on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's it. Yeah, you can get electric ones. All right, mm-hmm. well, let's move on to your sink. Yep. Cold water only, but uh, you have a cool box next to it that will deliver <laughs> lava. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that that, that, cold that doesn't usually lava. happen. It's, that doesn't usually that happen. That is dangerously hot. Yeah. That's because the, 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 like when they built this place, they just didn't, they were like, well, we need a hot water. I, well, I don't know why they did it, yes. but we don't get, we, yeah, we don't get control over that. Most most things have But problems. I think it, at Sasha and Callum's flat, they also have like a big water heater with a like eight different knobs on it oh, wow. next to their sink. Instead and of just a hot the, tap. I don't know. I mean I didn't use the sink. I wasn't gonna be like testing it. I was like, it looks expensive to use the hot water heater, so I'm not gonna do that. Oh it actually yeah, like just to process. remind you, if you turn the tap on that hot water heater too tight, it bursts and goes everywhere. So don't crank it too hard. It'll continue Lava. to drip. Yeah, it, it was dripping. Yeah, it's, I did ke- keep tightening it. Oh god, <laughs> it hasn't burst yet. So. Yeah, okay. <laughs> anyway, um, why are you in England? Uh, Chase Tech, World Chase Tech Five. World Chase Tech. Are we gonna do the whole like Davis origins, like Austin? Mm-hmm. Do we want that? Yeah. What did you do with Callum? Because what basically what happens? We got listeners. two hours into the podcast, and then Callum was like, "Do you want to talk about you at all?" And I was like, "If we want to." And then I got five <laughs> minutes in, and I got really scared. 
and I just deflected to Lisa and was like, let's talk about wages and parkour. <laughs> oh, so we can go deep on you and make you scared. Well, I mean, like we did, we got deep, but I definitely like, it was funny because I wanted to do it. I was like, damn, we haven't talked like... I'm just here as an ambassador for Chase Tag. Yeah, it yeah, felt yeah. like. And mm. then he was like, "So let's talk about you." And immediately, I was like, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> did you no, talk? Did you I'm, talk heavy I'm Chase Tag? Like, yeah, heavy Chase Tag. Yeah, this is the um, problem, right? Is because Brighton's closer to Gatwick than we are, so Callum Snack, and also Brighton's cooler than here, and easier to get to, and has more people. So Callum snags all the guests before us. And more pasty shops and more. Yeah, we get, uh, we get like the sloppy fires. seconds and it's like, Sorry. oh, what didn't you speak about on yeah. the podcast that probably has more listeners? But I'm still going to claim we're Parkour's favorite podcast because I came up with that tagline and I'm just not going to change I'm it. I'm not going to deal in favorites, but I will say we're pretty early morning. Yeah. yeah. Before lunch. Yeah. yeah. I'm having tea. I'm hydrated. I'm well rested. I was drunk on Callum's. Yeah, but that's great. <laughs> exactly. I think it's good to have the yeah. yin and the yang. Uh, but so I want to be... get the more adult balanced. All right. I'd like to do the drunk one. Adult. I, you, you I are, prefer the drunk one. You're the wild guy. Like, you're the fucking NAPC after party oh, running baby. in your pants, sometimes not in your pants. Just, you know. I pants, miss that. Pants being boxers, not trousers or slacks. Big yeah. pants off guy. Big clothes off guy. Yeah, you are. Um, but I quite like to know the origins. Where are you from? I don't know. Uh, Pembroke, Massachusetts, originally suburb of Boston. I was going to say Boston for yeah, people Boston who don't know. for those who don't know. Boston. Same thing of where I live now, which is San Diego, but I actually live in Lucadia. Lucadia. Yeah, it's like a little surf town outside of San Diego. Lovely. You make that sound so quaint. How, how small? Is how small is little? It's not Brighton sized. Definitely not Brighton sized. Um, but like little would be like the town that I live in. Yeah, it's not a village. Yeah, okay. Um, but it's it's a small town for California. Nice. Um, and it's sleepy to an extent. Like, everything closes at midnight. <laughs> Sick. That's sleepy? Yeah. What's well, not we can sleepy? Go, if you go down to Encinitas proper, everything closes at 2. Wow. So we'll, like, go out by, like, going... I mean, sleepy's fucking... One, one everything highway closes at 7 down. or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's Cal. I mean, it's California. It's all young people. So yeah. get them to bed at, at midnight is, like... True. Sleepy makes me think of like Hot Fuzz, like that village. Yeah. Like yeah. That. I love America. Like sleepy. Yeah. 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 Sleepy. yeah. Sleepy. 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 Mm. Um, so you start, you, you grew up in Boston. Mm -hmm. uh, you, before we talk about parkour, actually, I just want to say from, from what I've seen from your socials, you, by the looks of it, have a very, very amazing supportive family. Yeah, you. Uh, I, yeah. I constantly hear good stuff about your parents from other people, and also you and your sister have incredibly. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I mean, my family are fucking great, but you seem to have this like next level of like appreciation for them, which is sick. Yeah, and I assume that is what has essentially produced yourself and your sister, who are both like, sort of, like, are you a professional athlete? Or I mean, your sister obviously is, but like, no, yeah, I mean, but like, I define professional as like you make a living. You make an actual living. So yeah. I, I think of myself as like kind of like a journeyman or like a pro am. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Them. Yeah. Um, but like, I feel like you, given, have you got any other siblings? No. No. Just nor and I. So were, were they just like crazy supportive of whatever yeah. you wanted to get into? It was, and it, and it wasn't even supportive in the sense of like, like my dad talks about anytime he shows like one of his friends what we're up to or he's like catching up with one of his friends or like another parent from our town growing up. Yeah. Um, they'll be like, how did you get Davis in order to do that? And he's like, we didn't. Like, that's the thing is like your kids, you tried to get them to do things. Yeah. Our kids found things and we were just like, yeah, do it. Like, yeah, it yeah. Mm. Um, and they just gave us every time we needed more slack on the leash. They just kept feeding it to us, you know, that's and we sick. got hurt a lot for that, you know, but I think that's the way to, to live. Well, um, I don't know why my nose is so itchy. It's your your You're allergies. I, Davis um, had never heard the term hay, hay fever. He never heard hay fever before. Really? I mean, I feel like I've heard it. I just didn't know exactly. I was like, is it like a specific? Like, I thought hay fever was like you know when you lay down in grass, and yeah, your back hurts, yeah, like it itches yeah, yeah. a lot. That's what I, I can be a bit of it. I think, I think yeah. that's just I, mean, I, I think that's just grass being shit. Yeah, grass, grass just is itchy anyway. It's just like oh, lovely. I want to lie down in the grass, and the yeah. second you lie down, you're like, why have I done this? Yeah. Um, blanket. How old were you when you found parkour? How did you find parkour? So I don't know. Um, I, I mean, I tell people that I've just been doing it my whole life because there's like pictures of Nora and I when we're little, like up in the door jam, like yeah, climbing, yeah, you sick. know? Um, but the earliest actual like proof of park, of me knowing what, like that it's a thing is this home video we have from 2007. 
And it's me jumping out of our treehouse landing. And I'm in the woods. Jumping out of our treehouse landing, looking at the camera going, now that's what I call city jumping. <laughs> <laughs> that's the whole clip. Are you saving that clip for like... Dude, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know. I might have to like archive it. Yeah, and just never Because yeah. I remember Max saw it. Max Henry saw it when I was younger. We were like back at my house for Hubbable one year. And my dad pulled that up. He's like, yo, guys, check this out. And I, I didn't remember it at all. That's amazing. And I was like, oh, hell yeah, this is going to be sick. And then, like, I in slow-mo, I saw myself saying city jump. And, like, <laughs> and then Max Max just, like, did not let me live that down for, like, yeah. three years. Fuck. <laughs> um, it'll, it'll, it'll resurface. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For your, for your end-of-life documentary kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah when I die. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> city jumping. And they're going through my life. It'll be one of the clips they bring up. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I mean, so I don't, I don't want to like do the whole like, oh, your sister's a fucking, I mean, your sister is obviously a phenomenal athlete. She's insane. But like, um, what, how was, she's older than you, right? Mm. How was her progression through skateboarding as you were sort of like, how old were you doing when you were doing parkour? And she was, what am I trying to say? Was she like turning pro and you were like, you know, doing parkour as a hobby and you were kind of like, oh, maybe I should take this more seriously. Or was there any like kind of dynamic there? Yeah, the, of- oh yeah, yeah, there is, I think most of my entire like dynamic in sport in general in life has been shaped after that. Because yeah. I was like, three and a half years behind her. Yeah. So it's like in a way kind of the perfect age gap. And it's because, so close to home, right? Yeah, like- so close to home. But then also like in a way a really hard age gap because I would literally give, my, when she did something, in my head, I'd mark that and be like, you have three years. Otherwise, oh, wow. that counts as a failure. Yeah, far. Mm. And a lot of those have passed by. And she's in a far more established place. Exactly. Like, and that's the thing I kind of came to in the past, like, two years where it's just like, word, if that's what you wanted, and it is, you picked the wrong sport. Mm. And that's okay. Like, I, I could have gone into skateboarding. I could have gone, like, stuck with BMX. I could have done track and field and probably found a same level of success that I found in parkour which I think is pretty good. Which actually would have netted you money. Would have netted me like a proper career. Yeah. Um, so it's like, I don't know. I don't know. It's not something I regret at all. It's just the fact of it is like you picked the wrong sport to do that. The mm-hmm. way I look at it is like we have to basically look at those things and then go, cool, what was happening 20 years prior to that because that's kind of where we are. Yeah. Like yeah. It's like we have to go back. We want to make these direct comparisons, but it's just not. We have, we literally have to go back in time and be like, okay, we're we're so much smaller. There's so much more like grassroots stuff. We're still figuring so much shit out. Mm. And it's like reverse, and then see like what things there we can kind of replicate and and take inspiration from. Yeah, and mm. I think the big my big takeaway, like, because I've been thinking the same thing, like this whole time. Yeah, because I'm so close to that. It's like I'm like always like, what are we missing? What are we missing? What are we missing? And it's like unfortunately it is the simplest answer and it's the answer no one wants to hear there's no industry for parkour well we need a big mm-hmm. fucking piece of wood that we can sell yeah ex- like we don't trucks have and- bearings trucks wheels hardware yeah. we have shoes maybe someday mm. you know but it's we like have you- clothes like you guys but there's no helmets you don't mm. need shoes to do parkour. or you don't need specific shoes to do parkour. it's a double-edged that, sword yeah. is that the ceiling of entry to parkour is nothing and therefore but therefore the roof of possible gear you can use is so much lower than every other sport yeah like that's why my main focus has always been on competition because i think that's our best shot yeah is competition mm-hmm. or content yeah and, and like, i think i think with i was going to say content because i think we like you're not going to get everyone paying for content but i think we can make it more acceptable that like it, the, the understanding of hey look we don't have skateboards but we do have people who you know sell films or whatever exactly. and it's like if you want to fucking make this thing grow then and that's what you guys have done a great job of. Kippa's doing a great job of that. Fucking um, Queen City's coming out. Yeah, Queen City's coming out. I'm. Have you seen any about, of it? I haven't seen any of it, but I am talking with Max right now about working with Point A on a yeah. project as well. Nice. Well, there's two projects. One of them is going to be like a personal one. Sick. And then another one is going to be like a, holy shit, I got invited to do this one. <laughs> yeah, sick. Which, that that second one's a bit more hush, but the 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 first one that I'm excited about it's gonna be, um, like half parkour, half mountain biking. Oh, um, nice! And then I'm gonna try to get a bunch of interviews with parkour friends, some surf friends, mountain bike friends, skate friends about like mental health in action sports, mm. and kind of the the duality there of like how it can be so helpful at like working through that pain in your head, 
and like the fear um but there's also that other edge of it where it's like you can use it for very self-destructive means yeah yeah Mm -hmm. um and that was just from like talking with kent johns about wanting to do like a big project but wanting it to have some meaning and not just be a sick edit because i really wanted to do like a june shine screening and like work with like a lot of my other like a lot of the other communities in southern california that are like not necessary into parkour but the interest is there i see it's so funny because you've just tacked tapped on like five different subjects that i kind of want to get onto almost but they each like they each have like chunks that i think we can dive into yeah um yeah that's that's so funny you literally Mm. just like listed all these topics just express lane right by all the bus stops (laughs) (laughs) which one are we going back to well i mean let's just really quickly cycle back to like hub and like well like boston hub and then why you moved to california like i mean let's I think the, the the meat of what I want to talk about is what you just went through. So, but like yeah, you sure, were sure. obviously in Boston, you were in, you were sort of hub. When did hub come about? <sighs> that was like when I first started coming up. So I remember my first jam I went to, my mom drove into Boston with me and took me to Chinatown. Oh, sick. Quincy, and I met Dylan there. Wow. And Dylan, um, it was Dylan, Kyle Smith and Karen Ferry, I believe. And they were BU parkour. Boston University parkour, maybe uh, okay. Boston College. Dylan's gonna hate me for not knowing which one it is, uh, but they had a parkour club at their university, and I I found them through the old NEPK uh, New England Parkour forums. I forget what the forum host was, but this was back in like the forum days, <laughs> um, and I met Dylan through that, and that was like the first time I met him, and I trained with them that day, and I was like the youngest kid there. I was like eleven maybe. Um, and my mom was like, yeah, this is great, blah, 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 blah. Went home, came back out again, and, like, kind of became, like, one of the little brothers of the group, of yeah. which there were many um, throughout the years. Like, people like Z, Sean Batista, like, kids that, like, got pulled into that group uh, growing up. So, yeah, I grew up with them. I don't, I don't know what year that was. I mean, if I was 11, it would have been 14, 15 years ago. Wow, yeah. So, yeah. I don't know where the hell that would be. Yeah. But so the gym then gets built. Gym didn't get built until after I graduated high school, which would have been 2016, 2017. Yeah, okay. Um, but I trained with them growing up all through high school and middle school. And then um, we had the AOM competition. There was the, I wasn't there for that. That was like right before I was like kind of getting into it. Um, but yeah, Hub just grew up as like this local grassroots team making videos. And then, and Dylan was always like the ringleader and he built this massive community in Boston that we're finally seeing like kind of really grow fruit, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then a- after- That long tail, isn't it? You start yeah. to see like the, the, what do they call it? Like a talent hub. Yeah. You just, mm-hmm. you see the talent coming out like, and it takes a while after things like gyms get built and stuff like that. Yeah. But then you see mm-hmm. these people coming about. But in, in the cool thing too, was like even before the gym, like, the footprint for it was there. Boston has really good spots. Yeah. It's really easy to travel around once you're in the city. Dylan just did a great job of creating Hubble. I mean, Hubble was like, even when like Beast Coast was happening, Hubble was up there next to it as like the biggest gym in America. I went you know? to one on, it must've been off the edge. And we, I think yeah. we popped in for like a day. Yeah. yeah. And it was crazy because it was in some random like kind of warehousey building. It wasn't the gym. Oh, that was before the gym when they rented that one out. Yeah. yeah. And it was just like nice. wild setup, like kind of a labyrinth of rooms. And I yeah. was like fucking impressed at just like. Was there a setup in a warehouse? We, they made a pop like, up gym. Yeah. It was sick. It was like, so sick. And they were like, they had like a cheap heat press and they were like printing people's t shirts and yeah. things. And like, I mean, oh, it was wow. chaos. We literally went for like an, an evening. And then I think the next day was like the off the edge jam or something. But it yeah. was like a wild, like, wow, this is like DIY, but sick. These yeah. flies. These flies are so big. Yeah. with the, It's that kind of t- summer, spring. Yeah. F- big hot fly summer. Mm. Um, but yeah, and then after high school, Dylan invited me to work at the gym. So I went there and coached. Had a great time. Really liked it. Grew on um, I don't think I'm a good coach. <laughs> at least not for like kids. <laughs> It's definitely a little harsh on some of those kids. Backhand in them. But now they're all like super good athletes. Yeah, they had like a one percent impact on that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, but Dylan's an amazing coach. All those guys are like so dedicated to creating the best humans. Like, yeah. nothing, like athlete comes from that, but like the philosophy of of how Hub coaches is so good, and it's like 
very much based around like making like a complete human being That's and sick. like teaching oh. parkour is like a way to be that yeah and it's i've always really liked the community there and those kids that are coming out from that are insane sick. like mm-hmm. insane like i don't know if you guys know big will hess he's yeah. the smallest person in the world i but think so. so good i've seen some wild shit from that gym the last yeah. couple of years like well will's like this young young kid he's like Five one, I want to say he's like super Big small, lad. and he was doing you know the Kong Pre that Rizzo and I were doing, Joe Rizzo, yeah, to the big metal or the big uh, concrete pipe. I think Ali just did it, Ali Fat, yeah, yeah, he yeah, just did it. So it's like there's like three of us, and I think Jimmy Pereira hit it or bounced it a few yeah. years ago. And this kid Will is like the smallest athlete ever, and he's just hitting it. it. That's Whoa. sick, and it's like. When he's when he grows up and yeah. gets big and is still like I don't even know he's once he gets his insane. puberty legs and like there's a bunch of kids cool. like him there like I mean he's like the standout of like the hub kids but there's so many others like that that's mm-hmm. sick fuck wow. I want to go back to hub yeah yeah so you so you're there for a bit I mean a few, yeah, yeah, few years right yep and then what brings you out to California so Nora had moved out um four five years prior to that um. She moved out right after high school, basically. Like, yeah. That was her thing. She was like, graduate high school, go to California. Was she already pro at that stage? No. No, so okay. By the time I moved out, she was. Yeah. She was pretty well established, but she moved out to go pro. Yeah. And it was this huge risk. Her, my mom moved out with her. Oh, and wow. they were like living in like, basically like renting bedrooms at people's houses. Just And she was just and purely like, focusing on skating. Yeah. And like, she was working at Welcome which is now like her brand yeah. not her brand but it's like her main skate brand that she she rides for and they're amazing people um jason at welcome supported me a lot in parkour he loves yeah. it and he's like hooked me up with a lot of clothes and throughout the years nice. um but she was like working basically full-time and then skating full-time and just trying to make it in like the competition circuit yeah um and that ended up leading to her becoming pro in competition and then through her art being able to kind of leave competition and just become like a an artist icon in skating who does video parts but that's what inspired me i was like oh i'm gonna just go out following Nora's footsteps Nora invited me to come live with her because she had like we had a big house in oceanside um so it was the fall of 2018 that i ended up doing that and then i had a gig for like a stunt show that i was going to be doing um and it was going to be like 50 grand, 40 grand right off the bat, like a month's worth of filming and work and then having yeah. 50 grand to like sit on and train on. So I like, I was like, word, hell yeah. Like got this gig set up. Let's get out there. Flew out, landed, got settled into the house, got an email from the production company. Hey, like you are our man for this show. Um, the show is canceled. <laughs> and I was like, word. So I moved cross country like being like oh i'm good i'm gonna be set yeah and it just basically the entire support of that just fell out immediately so i like had to get shitty like picking up multiple jobs and everything um but the main thing to get out there was stunt work and in competition and stunt work fell through and that like turned me off of stunts almost Mm -hmm. completely at that point um but i'm happy i did it and i'm i've definitely like found a, a good relationship in parkour and like how i have like how i interact with the sport now through that it is so from like an outside perspective it felt like around the time you moved out and all that stuff kind of happened i wasn't aware of the losing the stunt job thing but like it felt like you had a kind of and i think this is probably what you kind of touched on with the mental health stuff but yeah. like shit got pretty bad for a bit yeah and i uh, and then like but now it looks like you, I mean I'm fucking envious of you like the, the shit <laughs> just you're you're kind of just the stuff I see on Instagram of just what you get up to and then just the type of people you're around because it's not just parkour people it's no. so multi-talented like yeah. this is so sick but so how was that because I mean yeah you move out and I remember you you're working at Starbucks for a bit right <laughs> yeah yeah and I remember Starbucks and coaching at Apex and I it think was awful that's exhausting it I think you so were on like maybe the high drop podcast or you would or somebody had mentioned i basically heard but i don't think it came from your mouth about how actually what you'd found being more restricted by work like i think you said like i really can't remember where this came from i just remember hearing that basically you said that by 
before having a, a job, part-time oh, yeah, job, yeah. No, I think I it was like you were scared of getting anything like that because you thought it would impede, like impact your time. But then once yeah. you actually got that part-time job, you were like, okay, well that's the restriction there. So now I'm, I just have to work with this. And actually that yeah. kind of structure almost helped. Yeah. Like, well, cause when I was coaching, um, I found that like where I'm going to the gym, I have to go to the gym. Yeah. I have to coach all day. Um, and obviously it was something that I saw as a privilege, but like subconsciously you're still like, where this is a responsibility I have to do. I'm coaching all day. I, I want to leave the gym and go home, mm. you know? Um, and I found that when I was working like a normal job, I was like at the job and I was like, I want to train. Like I want to go out and surf. Or I, I think you found that with coaching, right? Yeah, like, it's just exhausting. Yeah. You don't want to train afterwards. Yeah, you don't. You, you want to get out of the environment. You want yeah. to get out and you just want to chill, which, yeah. is, which is a shame. Yeah, and I mean, there. It, it's. I think it's just whether or not the job's for you. Like, there are people, oh, like people a lot of the hub it. guys, that are just, like, there and they'll coach for, like, six, eight hours and then train for three more hours on top of that. I'm like, that's sick. I can't do that. Yeah. You know? Um, but it definitely was a struggle. I mean, I got out there and my dream going out there was to go pro in parkour, which... There's what five people that are really doing that, like mm -hmm. on a true level. Um, so I went out, that kind of fell through, and I definitely struggled with that for a long time, and struggled with like kind of the hopelessness of of what I imagined. I was like, "Word, I'm going to work at Starbucks for the rest of my life." Yeah. Blah 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 blah. Um, and then a year later, basically just under a year after I moved out, went out to NAPC and banged up my knees pretty bad and my te patellar tendonitis was getting really bad and then right after that i went from napc to chase tech four tore my acl fuck came yeah. home didn't realize what was wrong i was like my knees are like gone so yeah because i remember you maybe even when we like came to boston i, I just have a vague memory of you may oh, I've mentioned. had te patellar tendonitis since like yeah i remember you talking about your knees it was bad i oh i it, there's like I, I remember that NAPC you hitting your knee because I, f I was filming it yeah. and it was on the, the fucking pro dad cam. And it's like, it's one of the reasons that I love that style of camera and also filmmaking. Cause like you had no idea that I was, I was just on the other side of the gym. Oh, like, I did. Zoomed in on you filming the fucking, you're doing a prep of the yeah. speed run. And you, what do you do? You, your knee, just your, hyper extended my knee. Your foot slips oh, or something. Yeah, I went to, to like, it was like a stride up and it was you like kind of off block. camber stride. Yeah. So like my momentum's going this way and I just strode tried to lift my leg up to just catch it and I just towed straight, like yeah, caught was, my knee on the bottom of my knee and just like hyper extended it. Yeah, Ugh. and I remember just like watching you afterwards and I, I watched it not that long ago, I can't remember why. But it, I've you, never I, seen it. Really? I mean, I I've seen probably, the phone clip I oh, have I could probably it, dig it cuts it out. out right after. I could probably dig it out. Like, and I, yeah, I just remember being like, fuck. Like, yeah. cause I could see, cause what, it was around that time that it really felt like you wanted speed comps. Like you yeah. really, really I was wanted- hungry to, as fuck, man. Yeah, you were fucking hungry. Like, I was hungry as fuck and I was in like- You were in good, a, a, like- I was in good shape, but my needs weren't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like, I was, I would do a run and then just like go sit down and just be like, fuck. Every yeah. time and I'd load, every time before comp, like 1600 milligrams of ibuprofen. I just remember, I do say like, you just- fuck. This, it's funny with comps because some people are super relaxed. You get someone like Max who just like super chill and sometimes that plays off, but other times it doesn't. Yeah. But then like you are one of those focus guys and it's mm. like, to some people that's a bit intense, but I always respect it because it's like, well, mm. they care and they want that result. Yeah. And then yeah. that's why it's so fucking painful to watch like you then get injured fucking practicing. Yeah. But yeah, so you, you did that and then you tore your ACL. Which, what's the ACL? That's in your knee. My, my left ACL and it basically stops your knee from doing that. Nice. Okay. Um, and it wasn't, luckily it wasn't a full tear, but I trained the day. I just felt something was wrong in that match. It was against breach. It was when I was chasing Chavi. Oh, uh, okay. Um, and I like landed and just did this, got up to go after him. And I was like, uh Oh, finished the chase, went out and like did a squat to kind of like, and I just felt like a, oh. in my knee. And I was like, Oh shit. <laughs> and I just, I couldn't, I didn't have the explosivity off that and it felt loose yeah. for the rest of the trip. And then the next day was the breach jam and I was like fucking hung over, jumping, having a great time. And then I get on my flight home, land in San Diego and like go to stand up on the plane and like almost collapsed. Wow. And my knee was like a fucking basketball. And then like Callum and Tim and Ed were coming to visit like a, a day or two later and I was yeah. like, fuck. So I basically had to tell them, I was like, come down, but like, I'm in chill mode. I need to go get like MRIs and everything. That sucks. And I got MRIs on my knee and on both knees. And it was like, 
these two massive lists. It was like sixty uh. percent interstitial tear on both patellar tendons, sixty percent tear on my left ACL. Like both meniscuses were shot. There was a bone bruise on both of my knees. Um, my left knee was like there was a fragment of bone floating in it, and they were like, "We could scope it out, and then you can't walk for six months," which I couldn't do because I had to go to Starbucks and work. So I had to be on my feet moving around and they were like, you could do that or you could just wait and your body will absorb it or it will go into your knee and shred your meniscus. We don't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was, that was like my two options. They were like, risk it, go it, and they were like, it'll just go in and shred it immediately. Like if you walk at all, it will just like. What the fuck? They're like, it's your call. And I was like, I'm, I was like, I want to get surgery, but I can't. Like I need to work this job so I can pay rent, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I ended up getting lucky and it didn't shred my knee and my body ended up absorbing it. But I did like nine months of PT, no plyometric movement. That's when I started mountain biking. Yeah. It was like the only thing I had outside of that. Um, Is there no risk of you? Because I've seen where you like come off the bike and you know, you throw the bike to the side and you yeah. essentially land. Yeah. Is there no risk of that? There is, but I wasn't at the point riding yet. Yeah, like, okay. That was me just picking up mountain biking again. So it was mostly pedaling. And I was aware of like obviously my injury. So it was like, I'll pedal. Climb, like basically enduro riding. So yeah. you're climbing up and then you get the downhill part. And mm. there wasn't that much jumping. And I, that was way before I was going out to like the dirt jump compound. Yeah, you're doing like, some fucking... Yeah, I've, I've, never, like I've never done it. And it, on it. It's, it scares and also it amazes me at how like big some of these jumps can be. Oh yeah. And like even with like the camera showing it, it doesn't show it. Yeah. You know, yeah. like I remember the first time I rocked up to those jumps that you've probably seen me at a lot. And I was like... I can't do this. Yeah. And then my buddy was like, just follow me in. And I was just like, be like five feet behind him. Just be like, all right. And I did him. I was like, oh, hell yeah. I feel you like know? just in the air, I'd just be like, just pure spangle. Yeah. Like, you have just a freak out. But yeah. It's definitely scary, but um, I fell in love with that pretty quick. And then surfing came after that. Surfing was super scary. Um, but when I came back to parkour after that, it was funny. I came back to parkour in the first day training with like Nate Weston and some kids and I just tore my foot open on a piece of concrete in LA and had to get stitches and then couldn't walk for like two oh more weeks. My God. And I had this thing where I would keep coming back in the first session back, I'd get injured. It's like Camilla, that's what she's gone through at yeah. the moment. She just ankles that's and so everything. so savage. Like she just... um, oh yeah, how is she doing? I think she's recovering. I mean, she's so good at like taking it seriously. Yeah. So she's working at it, but I, I don't know kind of. And was she able to get the funding she needed for that? Yeah, so she got, she raised a ton. We're sending her a load from the, the crew neck sales. Um, so I think I think she's kind of in a decent position for that. Fuck yeah. She's, she's like, cool. I remember meeting Camilla at NAPC yeah, like yeah. that year, and I was like, you are a legend. Like, she's you're fucking be great. Yeah, she's amazing. Um, but yeah, it's just been back to back to back for her. But so. Keep at it. You'll be you, um, I mean, yeah, it's like right, right now, I look at you, you're surrounded by. The, the, I don't know. You just have like, you've obviously got all the skate connections, which yeah. is sick because it's just it. it there's there must be so much inspiration and also just like everything. It's like parkour elevated and it's just. Well, there's like this back and forth too. Yeah, yeah. Because like when I moved out there, um, this guy at that point it was just like a guy who I knew from like knowing skating. And I was like, this is like one of the best vert skaters. This guy Jimmy Wilkins. Yeah. He would always give me props on like my Instagram post, and I was like, that's so sick. And then I ended up like meeting him last summer. Like we haven't even been friends for like a year. Like I met him last September. Wow. And just immediately like best friends. Like That's we became sick. so close so fast and he was so stoked on parkour. And I'm obviously stoked on that. And like I taught him, he like got backflips. Oh, and, nice. Like, he's always wanted to do them. And he's like fucking got good backflips. And then the past like couple months back in like January, I started going to the vert ramp with him. Yeah. And he taught me like drop it on vert. Holy shit. Fuck like, that. Yeah. So scary. <laughs> yeah. It's so fun. Mate, I've done it on probably the, a, a ramp the height of this table and I got bodied. Yeah. Everyone's like, lean forward, <laughs> lean forward. It's exactly what Sam did. Yeah. But I landed on my ass cheek and like, I thought I was going to throw up. I was like, oh, oh, <laughs> like that kind of pain. But um, is that the same place that you did? Oh no, that was Tony's place, isn't it? That yeah. That's, well, that's where I dropped Is that where it is? Yeah. yeah. That, that ramp is big. Dude, yeah. and slippery. Really? Like I didn't realize how slippery it was, but yeah. it's like it feels like you're on ice. Like when I'm going up the top and there's so much G's, and you're like, you feel like the board's just gonna fucking slide out, and you're just gonna like oh. play. It's you, like so. Scary. Can you like drop in and get uh, uh, back there? 
Yeah. I've been trying them. Really? So you, but you can get up there. Yeah. I can, I like, I can like go up and like do like a 50, 50 at the top. Yeah. Cause that, like Jimmy's going up and doing like no up. grab five forties. Yeah. Like I'll show you guys the clip that he just dropped this morning. It's like, and he just so see. fucked up how com- like I I always draw like the comparison of like uh, an eight year old kid coming to a parkour gym and training with Travis. Yeah, mm-hmm. that skill gap and no offense to Travis and no props to the eight year old. That gap is so much smaller than the gap between me dropping it on vert and what Jimmy's doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. insane. Yeah. Does he just go there and just? Do that every day, pretty much. Yeah, he skates basically every day. That is the nice thing about skating is you kind of can. Yeah. Mm. Like, I couldn't... That level of parkour, if you did that, like... I don't even think Dom trains that level. At that level, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. And, like, Jimmy will just go... And it's it's just less impact. Yeah. And he he just won X Games, right? Mm. Yeah, he just won X Games. He tied... um, He was Bucky Lassick's record for most consecutive (laughs) gold medals. And leading up to that comp, he was like... It's like, no, like, I'm not skating well. Like, I feel like shit, blah, blah, blah. And I was always, like, hanging out with him. You're like, you're going to be fine. Yeah. You're going to be good. And then he came back from Japan, and I'm, like, bummed out about Chase Tag being, like, oh, like, I feel like shit. Like, I'm training hard, but, like, I don't feel good. I don't. And he's like, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. And now I'm, like, here, and I'm, like, in the zone again. And I'm like, all right, we're good. Yeah. So... I kind of like I, it, the mental health stuff's a weird one to like just go let's talk about mental health but you yeah. you explicitly kind of said before we did this uh, when we were talking on Instagram like you wanted to kind of touch on it what I like it's important too I yeah think. like what I mean and you said about this film that you want to do like yeah. what shit have you kind of I guess been through because I mean we've both fucking had our shit over the last few yeah. years mm. um, and um, it's I mean because it's it, yeah no go for it basically I yeah guess. I mean like, for me it's like my main two I think probably the common two depression and anxiety yeah um and my depression for the past couple of years has been pretty far gone but i've definitely had a lot of recurring stuff with anxiety where like th- like especially with the acl like coming back and training like being like any off camber thing and i i feel like i could just explode my knee and do you get scary. it specifically about like your knee then no i mean i get it about everything but it's like i mean you guys have probably both experience anxiety and the, the shitty thing is it could be nothing oh yeah so when you have an actual thing it's your brain just fucking go yeah, so, yeah you yeah. know mm-hmm. and like that and just self-confidence and then like the idea of like damn like this this whole past like 10 years i've wanted to be a pro athlete and like living under the in the shadow of my sister who's perfected that path i mean it can't like it's fucking inspiring and your sister seems so fucking cool and my sister yeah. compared to her and I'm like that's it but it cannot be easy for your perspective it's, like, it's tough mm. like, and, and I, it's I, amazing I, how supportive she is of you yeah, which she's, is no, sick she's so like, great and that's the thing is like there were times when I was younger like 17, 18 where I was like really angry about it you know yeah and I was like I work so fucking hard like I blah 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 and it's like it's not about that mm. like, it really isn't like it, it isn't an extent where it's like you need to do that but just because you work hard it's like there is a level of luck that Nora got that she deserved. Yeah. And there's a level of luck that I didn't get that I did deserve. But guess what? It's not fucking anyone's fault. That's just the sport. That yeah. I'm in, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but that was in, it's even harder when there is nowhere to put that anger, you know? So I, I, there were definitely times where I was like very self-destructive. And I mean, as weird as it is to say, because I think a lot of people associate that with like why they like me or partly why, but like, that NPC after party in 2018, I was not doing well. Mm. Like my best friend had died like seven days before that. Yeah, Jeez. I remember hearing it. Um, like I was doing really bad, and people saw that. That's how it came out. That and, and um, I feel like that's more common than like there's a lot of people who are big, bolsterous personalities. Yeah, who let loose a lot, and a lot of the time it is like what's going on under there kind yeah. of thing and there definitely was a lot and that like there a lot of that was an acting out of like self-destructive desires you know yeah. um and i always like am hesitant to say that and and be open about that especially with people that i like partying with because i don't want after at after chase tag for me to go out to a party and people be like like, like oh he's having fun is he a, like yeah, maybe oh he's having fun is he gonna is he depressed and yeah it's like yeah, no yeah, like, yeah. I, that is who I am, but there's definitely a level there where it's like, mm. especially then, like there was a level of like, not trying to hurt myself, but being like, well, if I fucking die having fun, like 
at least I was that like fun, yeah you know? reckless kinda, yeah just yeah. reckless abandon and uh yeah that self-destructive tendency definitely came out for a while and then my dad came out and visited and he saw it in person um like just getting blackout drunk like two three times a week yeah because it was summer and like all the june shine events are happening he took he like took me aside one day he's like is this like what you want to be doing and i was like no like fuck like no yeah, yeah so yeah. i like took a big step back from like partying in any sense for a while and then just trying to find things that i was like i want to have fun but when i'm done having fun i want to look back and be like that was sick and not look back and be like that was remarkably embarrassing mm. you know um and that's kind of where like diving into par uh diving into mountain biking and surfing and stuff came in um but yeah i mean doing those as well helped with the anxiety and the depression too because like i think we've all experienced this with parkour where you kind of have like a negative relationship with it and you start expecting things out of yourself um and expecting a certain level of success and like expecting a certain level of success on a small scale from like every session you go to where it's like mm. if i don't get good clips and I'm there with my friends who are getting good clips, that session was a failure, mm, yeah. you know? And now I've like, I've surfed hundreds of times or like probably one or 200 times and I've never gotten a single clip of me surfing. And I've gotten just as much fulfillment from every single one of those as any of my best parkour sessions. It is mm. so interesting where different people, like how different people quantify what a good session is. Yeah, for me, but, it's always been clips. It's been something tangible that other people can. Yeah, and it's know. like, I love, you know, if we're shooting a video, I think it's great to be like yeah. clips, but it's when it's the the every single day is the objective for clips. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's tough, especially like I don't know from like a motors perspective, because sometimes we'll go out for a training day and it's like we want to be filming something because it's kind of you know it helps, but then you don't want to just be just yeah. shooting clips. It's where it's it's always where you draw the line. Like where's the balance? And, yeah, it's so hard. Yeah, and are you doing a line for a clip or are you doing the clip because the line's sick? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and I I mean I think I still definitely have that issue of being like a lot of the clips i a lot of the lines i choose to do i'm like is this gonna look sick yeah and i i don't think that's even necessarily an issue because i think like i want to do parkour i think i am moving away from the f not from the competitive side but from doing parkour for competition reasons because i'm realizing i'm never going to get fulfilled in the way i want to mm -hmm. it's so much effort for nothing like maybe i break even on flights yeah you know? it's like realistically unless something massive changes. changes in the next few years competitions aren't gonna like competitions are gonna continue to grow as long as things don't go yeah. weird but it's not gonna suddenly be like oh in two years time you could do a speed comp and it will change your life yeah exactly like i mean it, we've seen so many athletes now win art emotion and things like this and for a very brief period of time feel and you can see it they feel like they're essentially like that's almost on the, the top part. of the, the what i said that's almost the worst part is like when you do win mm -hmm. yeah and you're like oh hell yeah like things are going to start lining up no, i mean that money ran out two weeks out Corey, oh. Corey is probably yeah. like the prime example and he probably wouldn't mind me saying this i think now um like after he won our emotion he he won that i don't know what year it was but there was this period afterwards like what we did off the edge and there was a lot of like i could sense a lot of like almost resentment from him because he loved x games and extreme sports and things yeah. and you see that exact thing where it's like oh you win if you win the biggest sport in that competition you're good you're good you're elevated you win a chunk of money you win all these opportunities the sponsorships pile in sorry uh and in parkour that doesn't happen and it's like yeah you get a bit of hype for a while but also you get a shitload of criticism because it's like oh did he deserve to win da -da 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 -da. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it dries up and then it's like, well, but actually nothing has changed. And you get, you, and you see it in these people, they get bitter, mm. like justifiably so, because yeah. it's like, everyone has those aspirations that you see with people like yeah, Nora sure. and things like this and Jimmy and, and, and it's, it's not there in parkour yet. Mm -hmm. But yeah, for you, it's like- I don't know if it's gonna, like, unfortunately, like the way we've been going, like I, I don't, maybe Chase Tag, if they get it right, mm. if they get it right, I, I just don't see it coming from anything else because it's just like, it feels so much like the athletes are the, like it feels so much like creating a lasting circuit or a lasting league or a lasting division where these athletes can continuously compete and test themselves and, and create f like a fan base is like the last fucking priority for anyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's really what it needs. Like at the end of the day for big money to come in, it needs to be, marketable yeah it needs to appeal to other people and it did they it does feel like a lot of people put barriers up to stop that happening kind of yeah. out of 
yeah, it's it's very interesting, mm. very very interesting. Um, Do you think there's more uh, more of a future in content then? Is that what you're saying? I think there could be um, because that's still again, I, I mean, quite I hard think, to get. To I that think position. the f- I, I think the future for parkour is in competition. Mm-hmm. It's just whether or not we're going to do it. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. whether or not the powers that be. You know, and it's kind of I'll save you about because I could just do that. I could just leave comp and like start working on organization. You know, and kind of like nut up or shut up on it. Mm-hmm. I'm not done competing yet, so I'm not. Yeah, it's the kind of be the change, isn't it? Like yeah. be the change mm-hmm. you want to see in the world. I'll save you, David Bell. Might come and fix things. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, I feel like it's a kind of it's a it's an all a bit of an all fronted attack. Like competition could be a huge driver. Content yeah. could be a huge driver. Like exactly. we kind of need all of them just at once. Or not, we're and then also, I think it's just. I mean, the thing I love about like what you seem to be doing is you're you're tapping into like other sporting cultures just through personal connections. Yeah. And I'm so kind of envious of that living out here in the sticks. And like, I want to be surrounded by kind of a lot of the people that I think you are, not just because it's like, oh, they're cool skaters, but because they're like, they're business owners, they're doing cool yeah. things. And it's like, and then also they're not all in the fucking same echo chamber of parkour. And a lot of them are super fucking stoked on parkour. Yeah, but it's like, they, parkour is such an echo chamber and it's like, it's so easy just to go like, oh, I want to do what Star is doing or I want to do what Farang's doing. Yeah. But it's like, I want to fucking look way beyond that yeah. and just, yeah expand mm-hmm. um i mean these other communities have like the frustrating thing for me it's like we are working on a problem we are solving as parkour right now we are dealing with a problem and the problem is how do we create like a vicious cycle not a vicious cycle but a cycle of like investment you know to fulfill this sport and lift up the floor and raise the ceiling and I, it, it it does frustrate me because like there seems to be this pushback where it's like these other sports solve this problem. Like there are there are people to look at. Mm. You know, there are there are communities to look at and sports and, and competitions to look at where they answer these problems. And I feel like one thing that is cool about parkour is how counterculture we are, but at some point that isn't self serving anymore. At some point we're we're going against our own best interest by being like, no, nah, fuck that. We're gonna do it our way. And it's there like, is, okay, mm-hmm. son, so you're doing it the wrong way though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's an amazing, amazing it's honestly fucking a phenomenal <coughs> <coughs> podcast episode <coughs> with no, uh no. Rob Rob Dear 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 Dick. Dear Dick. Um it's on my first million, which is typically like a kind of marketing podcast. Finance, that, bro. No, not let's say finance, but like they're two guys who are kind of, you know, VCs and stuff. And they, it's, but they bring Rob on and they kind of don't really almost know what they're getting themselves into. And that guy is just phenomenal, phenomenally successful off the back of um, a lot of his like content streams and things. But it's, yeah. it's mind blowing to listen to because he has like optimized his life and he fucking has this crazy routine and blah, blah, blah. But he talks about how he bought, uh he was sponsored by dc no it was like alien skateboards or something no what was it basically a tiny tiny skateboard brand from like texas or somewhere that he like he grew up under and he was like 11 or something turned pro under them uh and then sort of blah 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 blah. blah. then he gets really successful and then he the, the the owners of this skate brand had actually ended up selling it to another company mm-hmm. so they kind of had a buyout and then that company was just like fucking it up yeah. yeah he then personally bought back the company and gave it back to the pre-owners oh really and ran it for a little while he said and one but one thing he says in it which rings so true to like the way parkour is as well is he was just like there's this huge problem in areas of skateboarding where it's this like the the hesitancy to almost kind of like earn money and do things it's like they they want to just do the opposite yeah. They want to like be the street rats and yeah, stuff yeah, like this. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, and he, he just said he got fed up of running this company because it was like the people involved in it didn't want it to be successful. It yeah. was like, they were trying to do the fucking opposite things. And he, get, would, mm. and he just fucking success mixed up with selling out. Yeah. So and he just gave it back to the owners and was like, yeah, fuck it. Like, yeah. and now he's built multitudes of businesses. Um, but it's just, it's so, it literally just said a couple of sentences and I was like, he's just summed up so much of Parkour's problem. Yeah. And it's not like, I mean, we're probably fucking guilty of the exact same shit. Like, I think you get trapped in cycles of like, oh, I think we should be doing this. This is what we should be doing to like, yeah. da, 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 da. and it's like, okay, well, actually, what? But we're trying to work it out. Yeah, yeah, and I think there's like a difference between being like so headstrong 
in your mistakes that you make and being like, no, like, yeah, I know I'm not, I'm not making money, but I'm, I'm not making money because it's the right thing to do and I'm sticking true to it. And that's not something you guys have ever done. Like, I, at least from my perspective, like mm. any, any mistakes you might have made, which I can't think of any criticism that I would have. It's like, it is for like a principled reason, you know, and it is for like a being like, we're, we're we are going to tr- stay true to like making good content, making good clothes that people want to wear and people want to train in, you know? And it's like, yeah, you're going to run into hiccups there, but that's not like the same as like someone being like, I'm not going to pay for a parkour, like to watch a parkour movie because you should be releasing it for free. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like you should be doing all this fucking labor for free for me because it, it benefits the community. It's like, fuck off. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. shut up. <laughs> it's so interesting. Like we, uh, like over there we have this, uh, it's based off of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, but it's yeah, like, I saw that. it's the, it's the hierarchy of business needs, but you, you have to have, sales and profit and order which is like you have to create those things and you have to yeah. have that thing fucking systemized before you can actually get into the like this like giving section which is like impact and legacy yeah. the problem is a lot of people rush to thinking about what they want to like give and what they want to like because they think the top two bring the bottom three yeah but and you it, have it to have to an extent it though. can do to an extent but you have to have those things set otherwise it won't sustain itself yeah. mm-hmm. and we get so caught up and i think as social media and like vanity net metrics and things don't help because you get so caught up in like, oh shit, this this thing did really well. Like, yeah. I want to have that impact. But it's like, unless you fucking, yeah, fix the bottom, it's 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 not going to sustain itself. And I think that's where a lot of like parkour businesses get yeah. trapped. It's in I that side. You can't be taking all the all the yacht pictures and the party pictures on the yacht if the yacht's not floating. Yeah, you know, the yacht yeah. needs to be able to float. <laughs> you just rent rent it and get yeah, a free hotel. Yacht, that's what I would do. That stuff. <laughs> or just find a friend who owns one and be like, hey, can we hang out? Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Um, Should we talk about Gene? Yeah. So, well, Gene Shine. two things. Gene Shine, is it Hume? Hume. Hume. I don't know what Hume. this says. So, Hume. you're Hume. sponsored by Hume. Yes. And you work for Gene Shine. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Trying to get, trying to work my way up into an ambassador position at Gene Shine. Sick. Would be like the ideal thing. Okay. Sick. And so, am I right in thinking Nora is an investor in Hume? She. She is a sponsored athlete by Hume as yep. well, but the way she did it was instead of them like giving her, I don't know if I should be talking about this, but she basically has equity in the company. Okay, because I I list same with a lot of the junior. I think classes. it was the Nine Club one of yes. their episodes. She talked about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so like a lot of, and this is something that I'm trying to kind of follow in her footsteps again. Um, where it's like when you go, it's so easy to be like, where I'll do this campaign for this this company, and they pay me like three hundred, five hundred bucks or whatever. And then hopefully I do another campaign versus like being like word. I want to do a continuous like partnership with this company and get equity in the company. Yeah. 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 You know, and that's what Nora has done really successfully. And to be fair, that's a lot easier to do when all the bills are already getting paid. And you yeah. can think like you can think about the future more because of the present set. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's less risky to sort of take a bet like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and I honestly think it's less of a bet than taking the money, but, like one thing that I think a lot of people that are in a, a more financially privileged position, like they always overlook when they're like, Oh, you should just be investing. It's like word. I have rent due this week though. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Before that, before I can invest in my future, I need to make sure the yacht is floating still. Yeah. You know? mm. It's tricky. Um, Cause there's that whole principle of like investing yourself first. Like before you pay any bills, pay, like put some aside for investing. Yeah. But then it's like, what if you can only, just pay rent like what yeah. if you can't pay all the bills this month <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. and that's mm. unfortunately like the position that most people especially in america are in is that they are they are paycheck to, like, fuck off dog it's i think it's on it's on your head is it actually? there is a giant fly on your head yeah <laughs> fuck's sake <gasps> no oh, i was I so you close <laughs> it went in and back it's out so it horrible. went in um maybe it'll die in the light yeah um, so where a lot of people are like Literally paycheck to paycheck. When the economy is just yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to get into my my leftist. No, nah, we we here. know where we can find. <laughs> I, I feel like Twitter is where Davis. I don't want any more people following me on Twitter. Twitter is my safe space. Yeah, and it's <laughs> I, it's, it's, it's where you get political and where I get suicidal. Like yeah, if you, exactly. If you want to go to Twitter and you basically scroll down my feed, you'll sad. find you'll find vague threats of suicide. Sad Giles and, <laughs> and very angry or very and pe- horny Davis. People being like, "Are you okay?" Um, yeah, we didn't really go into it. I kind of, we've talked about mental health and went, what's your problems? But that was it. <laughs> I was like, I get really sad sometimes. And we just went, but I yeah. haven't been sad in a while. Yeah, same. <laughs> I promise. Then deviated away from the thing. 
Um, so June Shine is alcoholic kombucha. Alcoholic kombucha, yeah. What is kombucha? Kombucha is June tea. June June Shine. What's June? Um, I don't. I think it's like a type of it's green a month? tea. No, it's like J U N. Yeah. So it's like a type of like green tea, and I thought it was like live. Microbe. Yeah, so it has probiotics. In That's it. the one, um, mm-hmm. and it's made from like a scoby, which is a symbiotic community of something. Um, you work for these people. <laughs> I don't, I'm not a brewer. I don't need to know. This. Um, but yeah, it's it's basically it has probiotics in it, and it's like a a uh, why am I forgetting the word a fermented tea that was that fermented. There's yeah. a lot of like white claw and a lot of those other ones, or like even the other kombuchas. Um, what they'll do is they'll make the drink and then add like malt liquor. Yeah. You know, or vodka. And what we do is we just brew it and you let it ferment the same way you let beer ferment. And so it turns alcoholic. 6%. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All kombucha is alcoholic. Yeah. But they usually stop it at like 0.01%. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Um, and I mean, it is my favorite alcoholic drink. It's like so good. It's better for you than beer and all that other stuff. It's definitely like a lot lighter. Um, and their whole philosophy, our whole philosophy was like healthy alcohol for a healthier planet, like yeah. better alcohol for a healthier planet. And also the type of like alcohol that is used by people that are going to get up in the morning and go surfing, you know, or Sick. get up in the morning and go train. Like I want to have some. I don't drink. think like anything like that exists in the UK yet. No. And it's really, I've been ever since the start, I'm like, dude, the European parkour community would love this. Like mm. this would blow up in Europe and it would. And all the higher ups know that but it's so hard to sell alcohol from america and go into like europe or even canada mm. without being like a massive conglomerate like really? Bud- yeah like like budweiser you know or bush mm. um, just googling now fuck it would be so good if we could get over here. sainsbury's experiment with alcoholic kombucha looks to full flat in 2019 it's probably shit kombucha yeah that's I've always been scared of kombucha. Like I've been in like LA or something with Ellie, Emily, like when we were doing off the edge and things, and yeah. she'd always get it, and she'd be like, "Yeah, it's fermented." Da, 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 da. And I'd look at it and be like, "It looks really weird." Like yeah. it kind of bit pond watery and being yeah. a bit scared. Well, a lot of times, like especially with like those small kombucha breweries, like bits of the scoby will find their way. Yeah, here. it's like, it's like f- weird and milky and like, yeah. And I was just like, I don't know if I want to yeah. drink that. I know it's probably good for me. Yeah, but. and that's one thing that like. June Shine's done a really good job of is I forget the name of the specific bacteria, but a big complaint people have of of kombucha in general is that it's like vinegary. Mm, you know, it's yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and that, that's from that. a very specific bacteria that we actually kill off through our um, pasteurization process. Yeah, because there's like words like you know you say like oh this drink's got bacteria. I mean I guess you could say like it's got probiotics. Good, yeah, you yeah, could say good bacteria probiotics, and you're like oh that sounds alright. If you say it's got bacteria in it, you're like mm. yeah, but. <laughs> I don't know, people, I'm a big fan of just, like... Getting fucked up. Well, yeah, <laughs> but I mean more in the sense of, like, I think people, they hear certain words that they don't know what they mean. Yeah. And either attribute, like, a really good thing to that or a really bad thing to yeah, that. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Like, it's like, if you go through the ingredients list of an apple... Of anything. Yeah, yeah. of an apple and look at all those chemicals that are in an apple... You're not going to eat apples anymore. If People do it with tap water. water. They yeah. look at tap, the, 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 or even just at water, and they're like, "Oh my god, it's got this in it." And yeah. you're like, "Yeah, it's fucking water. It's water." Yeah. Um, <laughs> water is like, so what do you, what do you do for June? Um, I work in warehousing and production right now, so forklifting a lot. Oh, sick. Um, yeah, I'm forklift certified, ladies. Uh, and we basically like fulfill like all of the orders yeah. for the company. Um, I started off in direct to consumer at the start of quarantine, so that was like when people were all stuck at home, our direct-to-consumer part of the business blew up. And, uh, so you, uh, what were you doing? Pick just ups? literally filling out boxes, sending them to people's houses. Yeah, that's just throwing a little note and they're like, have a good week. I know you're do- what you're doing because we're all doing the same thing and that's getting drunk. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that was like really good for the, like it really expanded the business. Yeah, some businesses over COVID, especially like that, yeah. fucking exploded. Oh, around. COVID is... F- fucked up as it is like covid for me personally in my life like financially and career-wise was the best thing to happen yeah Mm -hmm. because starbucks gave us like i think i got four weeks off from starbucks because we they were like if you're scared of covid and i was like oh i'm terrified so i did that (laughs) took four weeks off and then halfway through forrest dean who's like the cco he's like one of the big guys at june giant and also a friend of mine and nora's was like how many hours would we need to give you at June Shine for you to like leave Starbucks? Sick. 
I was like, let's do like 35. So I just got all that unemployment from Starbucks and then started working at June Shine. And then my boss at Starbucks was like, hey, when are you coming back? And I was like, <laughs> not. Amazing. <laughs> Thanks for the money though. Bye. Wow. Um, That's so good. I didn't feel bad. I mean, it's fucking Starbucks. Yeah. 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 If it was like a mom and pop coffee shop. I wouldn't have done that. Yeah, but, of course. Um, and yeah, I didn't look back and June Shine blew up through that and. I like kind of worked my way up a little bit and now I'm shooting to get into like a, a supply chain role. So like the sustainability part and like the fair trade part of it is something I care about. Yeah. Making sure that like we're sourcing honey from like a sustainable place, you know, and it's not like coming from like some massive factory farm somewhere. I can't mm -hmm. imagine like the operation when it comes to, you know, oh, it's a, a product that has to have multiple, multiple ingredients that all have to be tested and certified yeah. and meet regulations. And we lead the, we lead the entire alcohol industry. Really? Right now in like certified organic kosher uh we're not vegan because we have honey you know uh, yeah. but like a lot of those like all natural ingredients like yeah. everything is natural and like now all of our competitors have to like they're stepping up those ones yeah, yeah, yeah. otherwise we're just gonna it's buy a disruption it's like yeah. you need the disruptors but that's the thing is like the same thing as what we need from like we need someone in parkour to lead the charge on paying women the same amount of money for competition you know yep so that we force everyone else to do it. Mm. You know, that's what happens is when you have one of those top competitors set a standard, if you want to compete with that, especially when it's something that the community cares about, like the equal pay thing, everyone else is going to have to step the fuck it up. It is so interesting because every time it happens, everyone goes into uproar, and then uh, six months later it happens again and nothing's changed. Yeah, mm. well, it's crabs in a bucket. Like, yeah. no one's willing to sacrifice their own temporary payout for it you know it's because like, we're all making such i get it like we're all making not that much money so it's like when you have an opportunity to do it no one's willing to like everyone's willing to make an instagram post yeah no one's willing to not go to red bull art of motion for, yeah in order to stand by that you know mm -hmm. it's it's you'd think if you had the money to put on an event in the first place and source funding from sponsors asking for like what three grand more just to sort out, to level out the, yeah. cause it's not like these people are being paid fucking tens of thousands. Or just take a hundred off the guys. It's it's give like a hundred to the girls and close up that $200 gap. We're not going to be that mad about it. Yeah. And if the guys are, then sorry, dude, like suck it up. And it's, yeah, it's not like that money's changing your life. Yeah. That like, hundred dollars, we're not that Canadian dollars is not changing your life. We're not at that mm -hmm. stage yet. We should be even to begin with anyway. That's that's my thing is it shouldn't be a problem to be fixed. Like it's the same way that and I was talking about this. I mean that's the fucking unfortunate thing about a lot of problems in the world, isn't that's it? That's exactly it's but but my main thing is like the conversation from a starting point doesn't make that much sense to me because no one's talking about paying style athletes more than speed. Yeah. And style athletes like without a doubt bring in more viewership than speed. Yeah. But if we did that, that would mean you're paying some dudes less than other dudes. Mm. And that's not okay. But if we're paying the girls less than the dudes, that's okay. And that sounds fucked up to say, and it is fucked up, but no one's framing it like that. No mm. one's framing it as in, like, we're just okay with devaluing the women in this sport. Yeah. Like, a lot of people are okay with that. And I fucking hate it, and I disagree with it, and I'm not okay with it. It's you know? so it's so mad. It, it's fucked. Man. Yeah. It's fucked, and I think it doesn't need to be fucked. And that's, like, those types of problems. Because there are problems that they are like a necessary thing like in general not having that much money in the sport that's no one's fault and also like there's problem there are problems that are, will take you know strategic planning and time to work through i.e like and, okay we've we've assessed that we need more money in the sport yeah. maybe if people did this and this and this over the next five years we would see an increase in this mm -hmm. with the like let's just pay women equally it's a it's a singular decision it's just do it. that takes a bit of planning to just make it happen but it's yeah. like oh we're going to do this yeah that's it mm. exactly right and all the reasons that i've heard for it are just i mean there was the original argument for it which was like in skill speed and style at any pc at least it was the same three girls on every podium just in different orders yeah you know mm. and that's like at least being like all right that's that's like a I, I still probably am going to disagree with it, but that's a fair argument. Um, and that's like and the a cool thing is like, oh, well, when that changes, when there's enough girls, you'll pay them equally, right? Because the, the and now podiums, there's a fuckload of women, fuckload like, of women, the podium are going to be the same, and now you have a new excuse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, that makes me personally doubt how good faith of a decision it was originally. 
Mm. I'm like, well, if you're just going to move the goalposts every time, every time you set a barrier for women to get paid equally and they meet it and then you add a new one, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. why, why are you doing it really? Like, you know, I, th- I think it just, it does come down to certain people just don't value the, the, the female competitors as much. I'm like, damn, just say it. <laughs> and that's a heavy thing to say. I know. I know that's yeah, not exactly no, no, no. like, and I'm talking about people who I value as friends. I'm yeah, talking about I people just, who I love. And I'm like, come on, man, please. Like, I'm, I'm just going to call you out for tapping on the fucking Oh, is that room. loud? Yeah. Sorry. Um, tip it, tip it. It's just, yeah, it's purely the, the, it's not that hard to change. Yes, yeah. it's, it's, it's not, you know, easy in some ways, but it's not, it's not impossible. Yeah. But is it going to, is it going to take just people to get involved in those comps and things to then switch it up? Because I feel like there was stuff on social media, but that didn't do anything. Yeah, no, social media is not going to do anything. No. What'd you say? Nova City, didn't they have a, an equal? Yeah. Yeah, Nova did, yeah. I think. Yeah. Shout out Nova City. I think your mic's on, you can't speak into it. I oh, just sorry, left yeah. it on. Nova uh, City yeah. equalized the the podium pay, I think, yeah. for athletes, which was pretty good. Mm. And, and I, I think, think the pay was, it was what, like a thousand pounds? Yeah, they, they yeah. always push really hard to like do what they can. And, and they're, they're such a small a, comp. They're so small compared to like a lot of the other comps. So I mean. So. Mm. It's a good vibe there, though. It was good. a fucking, the skill comp, uh, well, not just the skill, but like the women's comp this year was fucking sick. <coughs> it was fucking so good. Yeah. But yeah, then I mean, that's I a just small don't comp. see any proper excuses anymore. That's a yeah. small comp and that should be, it's a similar thing like you were saying. Yeah. Everyone needs to like meet that kind of bar that's being set. And I think that us as, I mean, I don't know if you're going to be competing in anything this year. Um, I like, I'm not planning on going to certain comps if they're not going to do that. Mm-hmm. Like, cause I mean, I I can fucking sit here on my fucking high horse all day and bitch and moan about it. Mm-hmm. But if I'm if I'm gonna still go to that comp and take the money, it's like, what are you doing? That's true. You know? And that's my like that is kind of my main criticism of just like the other male competitors is like, boys, come on. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm sitting here guilty because I'm going to Greece in two weeks time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but to be fair, you're not competing. You're going like, and I haven't been on a fucking plane in two years. Yeah. But that's I mean, it's not, still it's not, not necessarily be an like, excuse like that. Well, <laughs> it's, it's not an excuse, but it's also not like the male athletes shouldn't have to do this. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, like it shouldn't be a sacrifice we have to make. But also, like, let's let's take a hit one year for the girls and get them on board, and then we can talk later. Mm-hmm. You know, um, that's my my opinion on it. I think solidarity is like a very important the, thing. The, the hardest, not the hardest thing. There's there's always this like it almost needs like. The, those decisions need to be that way. I mean, even like you, you look at the uh, uh, Fulham movement and uh, NAPC just on yesterday announced their and Hop the Block all announced their dates on the same day. I yeah. think Hop the Block is like the week before or afterwards, mm-hmm. but like everyone always keeps the events on the so close. Right? On the spot, yeah. yeah so they're a week later. I think. They keep their events almost so close to their chest that then, yeah, once they then announce it, that that's when the uproar comes out. But really, that decision should have been made three months prior once they got all that stuff locked in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because then obviously from a logistical standpoint, there might be things in place that have them made that decision harder. And it's like, if they just address that at the start, if they'd said, hey, day one, we're gonna plan this competition next year. Like the first thing we're gonna ensure is this. Mm-hmm. Then when they'd gone out approaching for sponsors, et cetera, et cetera, that would have been so much easier to fix than after the uproar comes in. Yeah. But that's the thing is like prize money in general seems to be an app. Like, like I was saying earlier, where it seems like the welfare of not the welfare but like the the financial success and the financial like reimbursement of the athletes seems to be a second thought yeah mm-hmm. for all these comps it's like we I, and i get it because you need to make those first three parts of that pyramid work but if you're not making those work then there's something intrinsically wrong there and that's a bigger issue you know? yeah, yeah 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 um and it's not the athlete's fault <laughs> yeah it is tough um before we go on to Chase Tag, who are, by the sounds of it, doing a much better job in terms of actually paying people. Yeah. Uh, Hume is deodorant, right? Yeah, natural deodorant. Yeah, that's Oh, sick. I do remember it, no yeah. Preservatives and no no chemicals. I mean, there's chemicals, but it's, it is all natural. Everything's a chemical, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I was using Old Spice for the longest time and I would like go surfing, come out and my armpits would be like all rashed up and, we, and I've never had issues with like rashes. Yeah. And then like the past year, I've definitely had like, especially with deodorant where it's just like, if I swap deodorants even like once, it's like my armpits are just like. Fuck. Yeah, I find I have to kind of stick to one 
for like a your body kind of almost gets used to it. Yeah, you definitely like. Yeah, I mean, even with Hume, I definitely obviously I stick to just Hume, um, but I love it. They have like a bunch of really good scents. We just came out with our Out West scent, which is like. You tobacco, smell like a Californian. No, you smell like a cowboy. It's oh, like, sick! But it's like not in like a, you don't smell like shit and like cow shit and sweat. You smell good. Like it's a really good smell. Musty um, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean they have really good scents and it's all natural. So definitely something that like I care about. And it's a bunch of athletes. It's like Salima Masakella, who's like in the snowboarding industry, and um, Nora and a bunch of other people as well. Some pro surfer guys. Um, Is it a surf owned? I'm not sure. I know it's Blair Marlin who's definitely in the surf industry. Um, but it is like it is also like ambassador owned in a large way. Yeah, okay. Like people like Nora and the other ambassadors all have stake in the company and I think that's a really cool thing. Sick. Um, but yeah, they've been super supportive of my parkour and they're like it's it's really cool when I go through a feed of this company and it's like skate clip, snowboard clip, uh surf clip, uh, my, one of my parkour clips and I'm like like there's no reason that not for me, for everyone. Like, there's no reason that any brand that is posting skate or moto or, uh, like, mountain bikes shouldn't have part. We should yeah. be there with mm. them. Like, all of these people that do these sports are so stoked on what we're doing. And we can lean on the fucking, oh, the office fucked us over for as long as we want. Or we can realize that what we're doing is rad and people like it. And I honestly think you're, ownership of you're probably more of, like, a sort of pioneer in that space in, in getting these connections and doing that probably than you think think and also probably more than you realize right now mm. because i think you are yeah quite there's very few people like you who are sort of almost getting your feet your foot through the door these doors yeah and creating those opportunities because let's say there's a i don't know a fucking a hat company yeah. who are interested in part i mean because i've heard of human like aside from you kind of oh, just really? a, yeah, oh, yeah in like the e-com space and things so and it's the same with june shine but it's like these companies taking in a, a like a more wider is it holistic I don't know, wider a wider approach to their athletes across sports mm -hmm. and accepting parkour as, as one of the same level yeah. as all these things is is you'll see it happen for, with other brands yeah and another exactly. brand whether it's a deodorant company or a fucking water company or whatever won't want you because you're on these so they'll yeah, be like yeah. well cool we're like oh we're from seattle who's a cool guy from seattle exactly. like blah 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 and it's like it, yeah it's these little steps that i think will really and it's getting Help. your foot in the door and getting our, like our collective exactly fucking size nine and a half foot in the door yeah yeah and uh and it's just like i mean i think it, it is kind of like june shine being the first company to go all organic and it and it, it, it makes it so that like like you said those other companies see it and are like okay parkour is a viable thing exactly and i think yeah, that yeah, will yeah. trickle up in a big way because what happens when we get enough of these companies going and then suddenly reebok is mm. like hmm i'm seeing a lot of these athletes popping up on all these other like other action sports companies and they're all wearing Reeboks. Yeah. Mm. Reebacks, Reeboks. <laughs> and it's like, maybe there's a market there. And that was something I was talking about with Callum a lot too, where it's like, we don't have an industry. We have clothes and, it, and it's starting to pop up, but especially with shoes, it's so hard. And I think instead of maybe looking inwards and being like, where's the parkour shoe brand going to come from? Why don't we just roll with the punches and realize we all love Reeboks or we all love like the Adidas, the Adidas Galaxy, you know? Why don't we go for them and be like, hey, there is a market here for you. Yeah. And what we would need from you is fucking couch change. Yeah. Mm. Like it's the shit that you find in the laundry bin, you know? It's the, it's the whole like. And Nike, it would change our lives. Yeah. The mm. Nike SB story is really interesting because they, they tried to step in kind of without the like support of skate right and yeah. people got pissed yeah and then they kind of like pulled back and then they went back in with like they kind of put money in more reputable people's pockets to be like okay well we want to do this properly like be ambassadors and things Show us the way. yeah and then it really kind of kicked off because it was like okay well now actually you're doing the right thing and i think it's the same with parkour it's like yeah. if, if if nike propped up tomorrow and just went like here's the new parkour range absolute we haven't asked anyone's opinion yeah blah blah blah. here it is we're just gonna profit off of you everyone would be pissed well mm -hmm. didn't one of them do that and they did like a quick little run adidas, adidas right mm. adidas have kind of like dipped oh no unless you're thinking of the thing that like it's like an all black range oh uh, no so that was i don't know how but it became know publicly recognized as that a little bit but it didn't at all parkour in parkour because i feel like a lot of people just get completely i think it was just because it looked like it was die cut People, Store clothes. people get the easy. wrong end of the stick. So Adidas did a collaboration with a brand called Neighborhood mm -hmm. and the, the, the collection was called Parkour. 
Mm. And it was it was called parkour. And it was like, if you read the the bio of the collection, it was to do with like, you know, like being a fucking slick urban yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. But it had absolutely zero, it like, it wasn't meant to be parkour focused or anything. They just, they went, let's call it parkour. Yeah. <laughs> and and so many people saw that and were like, Adidas have done parkour clothing. And, it, and it's like, if you actually that. read beyond the headline and it wasn't even the fucking headline, and it just, and people were like not up in arms, but excited and everything, and like oh, it was like it's not fucking happening. And then it wasn't actually for us, and then people got mad. Like, <laughs> yeah, were like, like, well, they're not even listening to the community. It's like, dog, it's a fashion. It's lit. Like, there they're was doing a fashion release. Like, the only not. link was they went, oh, I'm gonna name my uh, my fucking my next collection table. Yeah. And then and then all the table makers were like, oh <laughs> shit, Adidas is getting into tables. <laughs> like, yeah. Sorry. Smack and shit. No, it's fine. Um, and then, I mean, it's kind of the same thing that Nike did with the free runner shoe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It was like I remember everyone was wearing it for free running for a while, and it was a foam bottom it shoe. Was, and it was, and <laughs> there were little blocks with that would just rip off. So you're like, I'm gonna land on a rail, and you just fucking went through it. Yeah. And I was like, I remember even from the start just being like, Why are you wearing those shoes? Yeah. But then there have in the past been times because Adidas made a shoe with um, free flow. They, 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 there was a. This is years and years and years and years ago. There is a huge chunky, uh, like who has one? Urban free flow? Yeah, yeah, blue has one, I think. Like basically some of the UF guys got like shoes made and Adidas were like trialing this thing and it, it never materialized into yeah. anything, but it existed. And the Ariake. Yeah, the Ariake was K-Swiss. Um, so people have like, they've dipped their toes in, but that was obviously way too early. Yeah, I think mm. what, we, it, what it would need to do is obviously not be way too early. It would have to be done right and I think almost like doing something like store X Adidas to start, you mm. know, or like like the store tens by Adidas. Yeah, or you know? I think they've got to do like a almost set up like a not a board of sort of ambassadors or whatever, but they've almost got to go in with quite a wide net and mm -hmm. be like, okay, how do we make like who are the who are reputable people from different areas around the community and try yeah. and make something that's really quite generalized and be like, okay, let's almost a bit like um uh. Clarks. So was Robert, the yeah, yeah. The yeah. Shoot, I was looking on the Clarks website desperately, being like, "Is there a parkour shoe in here?" But you know, like Clarks is like where you buy your school shoes. Yeah, they're like literally boots. like, yeah, they're, they're like, like a sh fancy English mm -hmm. boots. Yeah, like, they're they're a shop yeah, you yeah. go they're to when you're 12 years boots. old and you get fucking little little school shoes. Mm. But they they did this thing and they they went, okay, let's get like a BMX or a parkour athlete, like blah blah blah. And yeah. They got this wide net and they said, let's all just try and create something that's like unified and good. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's almost that approach that I think could be a way in. That's really cool. And I mean, what Miguel's doing with um, with Nike PK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people were like, that's super lame. And then he got, I know he had like a sit down with like a board at Nike. I don't know how it went. Yeah. But mm. the fact that it was- Cease and desist just <laughs> slid yeah, across the table. <laughs> I think, but that was his plan was like, he was like- It was, it was- I want to do this until they give me it a was bootleg and until, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bootleg until they notice us. I'm like, if that's what it fucking takes, yeah. you know? And that is a very parkour thing where it's like, I'm going to train at this spot until you c come kick me out. And then I'm going to be like, why don't you just let me stay? Because I'm not a skateboarder. I'm not going to fuck up your property. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, mm -hmm. And I think that- whether or not that's the right way to do it, whether or not it's going to work, I think he's fucking doing something, mm. you know, and I, and it's in a really good way. And he's not asking anything of Nike. He's just showing Nike that there is a market for them in this sport. Yeah. You know, and there is. There's a market for a lot of these plays in this sport. Um, and it, it's kind of the halfway argument of, like, we need more people to be buying parkour stuff. We need parkour stuff to be more affordable. Also, most people that do parkour are not wealthy people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it is like we have like a big triple edged sword. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fucking like Pentagon yeah. shaped sword. And that's a problem that you can't really fault anyone for. No. I think that's one of those that has to be a problem because of like the nature of what we're doing, you know? Yeah. Um, you've got to get on a train in less than an hour. Wait, what time is it? It's one, tw 10 past one. I mean, I don't, like, I don't have to be there. No, okay. I'm but chilling, man. Let's, I like the long podcast. Thing. I want to talk chase tag because this feels like a big passion for you now mm. has been for the last couple of years it has been for the last couple of years for yeah sure. um, yeah i mean i'm not like getting burnt out on it it is just like it's a lot of work right now and there's definitely been some I, damn i don't want like this whole podcast to come off as me being like a fucking hater on everything <laughs> i i am super stoked on basically everything we've talked about i just get worried about going down the wrong path and 
I am super stoked on Chase Tag. You get to see you. This is the thing I really like about your position is you are so close to these other established sports. We're going down the right path and businesses. The path yeah, they've obviously mm -hmm. gone down. They've made their mistakes, but they're ahead of us. Yeah, and it's like you have that direct like. Yeah, you're in their back door kind of thing. So like back door, backyard. Um, so yeah, you can. Both. <laughs> yeah, you can you can make those comparisons a lot easier than we can yeah. based off of like you know social media posts. Or yeah, whatever. and relative to the I think the rest of the parkour scene, Chase Tag is doing a wonderful job. Like yeah, we are like they're in there with ESPN now. We're getting a prime time slot this year. You know, um, they're doing really well for like athlete payouts. Um, I think I don't know if it's just the American teams, but I know that we got six thousand dollars just from Chase Tag, just to get there. Like yeah. just as reimbursement mm -hmm. for everything, you know? Um, and then with Envy, Envy's helping us out a lot. Um, and then Chase Tag allowed every team to have their own sleeve sponsor. And they were like, you should ask for like five to 10,000 for that. And I think most people got about that. We got 8,000 for ours. Yeah. Um, and then the prize money is really good. I don't know if I'm allowed to say it, but I will and fuck it. It's 12,000 for first, um, which mad. is 2,000 each athlete on each team. Is that only a first? No. I'm pretty sure if you make it past quarterfinals, you're walking away. I think it. everyone in semis definitely gets paid, and I want to say quarterfinals gets paid too, but I'm yeah. not 100 percent sure. Um, but yeah, but like like twelve thousand for first is like for first. that's like the equivalent amount of money spent on the average parkour competition on a, a whole the entire purse. the whole mm -hmm. the whole yeah the yeah. whole prize fund. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, there is like a level there of just like chase tag is so accessible outside of parkour. Yeah. I just don't see any reason that the other, like, that skill and speed and style can't be. No, it's just marketing. It, it's marketing and, and also how we, how we, um, how we, st like, structure those competitions to make them, one, good competitions first, and two, um, like, accessible to people that don't necessarily know. And, like, just quickly explaining how it works. Like, most people don't skate a lot of, but, like, and most people who do skate don't skate the mega ramp. The big air comp for skating was so big for so long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? And granted, it fell off, but that is, from what I've heard from Jimmy and other people, like, that is so much more a consequence of X Games as, like, the media side just fucking blowing it. Yeah. And that's my fear is, like, what happens when you have a great idea like this that can take the world by storm and you still fuck it up? Mm -hmm. You know? But Chase Tag, so far, doing a great job. I mean, that's, yeah, you can only, it's... So there's so many things that can come into something fucking up. So it's like, yeah, you just got to hope, really. Yeah, exactly. and and try. I guess try and be there and sort of when the opportunity's there to guide, help guide. And mm. yeah. it's like it's it's sick that we're all sort of Damien and Christian are they're, they're accessible. Yeah, like it's great. not like there's some they're giant so transparent with everything. Yeah, and um, they're, they're to like extent they can be. You can sort of give feedback and things. It's not like you're trying to contact some huge corporation or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it's, it's better to sort of try and tweak things as uh -huh. it goes on rather than just wait, I guess. Yeah. So. Yeah, so we got that coming up this this weekend, the 27th through the 29th. If you're in London, you can come by uh, your call in Bethnal Green. I Free think, entry. unfortunately, this might be out after what? the thing, this this podcast. Oh, yeah, you're going to release it out. Because we've got to do the park where you came. Well, well if, you, if, were you, there. Came if thought, you were there. If you were there. you know how we did, hopefully you can shoot me a text and let me know how we do. Yeah. So I can plan ahead. I would, um, I would drop it to two, two in a <laughs> no, week. No, you got but, that other yeah. one. Yeah. No, it's okay. Scratch that. But yeah, it's gonna be, a, it's gonna be a really good comp. My team's feeling great. We're stoked. I'm stoked. Uh, I don't know what else there is to say. I mean, it's a fucking really fun sport. I don't consider it a parkour competition, but I do think it is in under the umbrella. Of, yeah, like, mm, the because it's so, community. it's so, like, I, I know for a while at the start they had like a tennis player playing and yeah. things like this, and there were a few people who were sick. But like at the end of the day, it's just it's taking everything that Parker has taught you and then applying it to yeah. like a format. And it's yeah. fucking, and I, I think love about it. it a lot like UFC too, where it was like at the start they had like wrestlers and just boxers, yeah. and just jujitsu guys. And then it like very quickly, it was like, you need to have good jujitsu or you're going to get choked out every fight. Yeah. But mm -hmm. you also need to have good stand up game. Otherwise you're going to get knocked out. And it's like UFC is not a jujitsu competition, but jujitsu is one of the, uh, disciplines that does the best in that competition. Yeah. And it's mm -hmm. the same thing here. It's like, it's not a parkour comp. It's just parkour people are the best at this sport. Yeah. Mm. You know? But technically, if you put like <laughs> an aggressively fast sprinter in there who just like, you know, could run laps around any parkour athlete, they'd probably also do fucking well as long well. as they had 
relatively good agility kind of yeah. thing. So it's like, or like a, a distance runner. I think I think it's it's now we're going so much towards. Yeah, how's your cardio. how's your cardio game? Not where it should be for sure. <laughs> um, that, but that's the thing is like there's also different types of players. Where yeah. it's like I have always been for my team like someone who can like start a match either evading and usually get a guaranteed point, which is a really big deal. Yeah. To have just a point on the board to start a match, or like usually like a clutch player. So like at the end, if we need a tag, you the usually I can. The I monster feel they send going. in, yeah. I, I like to say usually because I don't want to like say this and then get put in and fucking lose a match for my team. And everyone's like, "Oh, you said you would go fucking you the kind of player, and then you didn't do it." Like that, that type of like interaction with people scares me so much. Oh, for sure. Like I love talking shit, like with Greg Ball and like a lot of the other guys. Like I love shit talking on social media. Um, but it is definitely something that sucks because it's like it's literally putting chips down on the table yeah. every time. Yeah. It's like, what's your hand gonna fucking look like? You don't even know. The like, fucking like this is the crazy thing about it. you. Look at like a parkour competition, and anyone who takes it ever so slightly too seriously, they're all like, "Whoa, you're like you serious? Like, why are you doing that yeah. kind of thing?" Any kind of rivalry, it's like, "Oh no, you're ruining the vibe, bro." Chase tag. It's you're literally getting yeah. people on the course being like, "Fuck you." <laughs> yeah, it's thing. so good, and it's great. And then if occasionally it comes a little too far, like they take it off the course and it's a bit too. You know, it gets a bit too. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I want to have press conferences before. Like, I want them to sit down, like, before the Eugen match that we have. I want them to sit us down. And you start throwing water bottles. The captain from each one, people asking questions and shit, and just like. I feel like that would be so. That fun. would be sick, and it wouldn't be like like I don't. I love all these guys. I'm gonna go get drunk with them after the comp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But before, like, but that's. I mean, that's. It's, it's also like let's make a bit of fucking. It's let's the sh- get it's some the show. Eyes on. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. Make some it's money like, for like fucking. I, I don't really know what my thoughts of Conor McGregor and people like that yeah. are, but yeah, like I don't like him. But there's a reason he's so like he brings so many eyes is because he does that shit. Like he yeah. throws fucking water bottles or whatever he does. And like. It's like that sells fights. Yeah, that like, sells fights. It's all fucking marketing. And I mean. Especially when it's like something where you're not actually going to hurt the person. Mm. It's a lot easier to do it without feeling guilty because I don't have to get in and actually break your jaw. Yeah. You know? So if I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to fucking grab your ass so fast, man. You just fucking no slap idea. you. Yeah. Well, you'll never touch me once. It's like, all right, it's a lot more peaceful than being like, I'm going to kill him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to kill him in the fucking ring. Like, there's a chance I'll kill him. Yeah. Um, I think my the most frustrating thing about watching Chase Tag is when the person sits in the corner too long and the person runs out. And they go to that like you know standstill. What they go to the standstill. Yeah, yeah. And then it goes wasting. And time. then it goes, and it's over. And you're yeah. like, fuck's sake! Like and there was no. It just never escalated it's to anything. Yeah, game, though. yeah. It's, it's part of the game, and I mean, it sucks when you. It sucks being on both sides of that. Yeah. Like I've been in play. I've only had it really happen once, and it was against Travi, and it immediately was followed by me tearing my ACL, where <sighs> I had him in a corner. And the thing is, like, for Chavi, that's perfect because he doesn't have to do shit. He's just waiting for me. Yeah. And I, like, and I was like, oh, you're not going to go anywhere, are you? Fuck. I got to, like, just make a dive. Yeah, it's like you make the dive and then they go. And it, yeah. Um, but it's it's part of the game. Wasting time as the evader is, like, super important. Yeah. And it makes it so that you are running down the clock without expending energy. And especially if you don't have good cardio, that's a fucking Fuck. really good mm. gameplay. Last right time now. when um Xavier got, what was it, four, five? What, he the was- UK one? Yeah, and yeah, he seven. Was it seven? And he was literally just like, <gasps> yeah, like fucking. Chavi's got really good cardio, man. Yeah, so him and him and Kyle Soderman have like so impressive. Are definitely setting the bar for um, what your fitness level has to be. Yeah, and to like he he just wipes the floor. It was so sick. Yeah. And when people start, I think when people start getting to that point, it's gonna be very great. This is the thing. It's like you look at the progression of parkour from sort of you know jump London days to now. Yeah. And the the level of size, skill, scale, speed, everything's improved. Yeah. And it's like Chase Tag, you're taking a very high level of parkour athlete, but you're applying it to a, a new format that is already people Specific are- Specific discipline, yeah. Yeah, already people are tweaking things and trying things. And like, as you said, probably not enough people are working on their cardio, but- No, I mean, I'm, I, for all the training I do do, I think I need to work on, like this next year will be a, a much heavier cardio year. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've, I've done pretty much fine so far with the level of cardio I have, but I, I still know I'm like, I should be better about it. Um, but one thing that, talking about what you were saying about like that level going up, we haven't had any European teams face any American teams since uh, GNF got second place in Worlds. Wow. And we're not the best US team at the moment. And 
there has been so much shit talk coming our way across the pond about like, oh, the Americans are sketchy. Oh, the Americans, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you guys are in for a... F- I, GNF is the only team that's competed against both. Yeah. We're the only team that's competed in America and in Europe. And I'm like, y'all in for a fucking wake up call. Yeah. Like, <laughs> the, a lot of the UK teams are really good, but... No, but the UK... And I would say the absolute majority of UK teams don't care nor... Well, not that they don't care. They don't yeah. take chase tag seriously until about two weeks out. Yeah. And they're like, oh, we should probably go to the local playground and do a bit of practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and, like, I think it was, was it fat you got a fly on your head? Keep it there. It's just like your little friend. Oh, one, I can feel it. so big. It's one of the, so big. Yeah. You can feel it weighing your head down. One of the teams, I think like a week or two before, I think it was the Run London team, were practicing and a guy came past and he was like, yeah. oh, what are you guys doing? And he joined in and actually he was sick. And, and, then he, he, and then he tagged Shane in the backyard one. And yeah. Shane got all pissed off. And he, but he joined their team like <laughs> so last funny. minute and he was just like a fucking randomer. Yeah. Whereas I feel like the Americans, you guys take it seriously. Yeah. And like we've had majority. that happen a couple of times, but then those people stay. Yeah. And then they specialize in like. But like you're training around the year. A lot like, of them are. Yeah. yeah. A lot of in like Apex has a permanent quad now. Envy might be getting us a quad. Sick. A lot of the LA guys train just at Tempest all the time. Yeah. They went up for a few sessions this year. Um, and yeah, it's going to be it's going to be cool and now that covid is over you can all mm, touch each other yeah now that we can come back across to here and, and do the world championships again i think it's going to boost it up again it is really nice that chase tech survived covid because like it was it definitely felt like it was probably one of those sort of concept businesses that yeah. you know two years of not being it able was to a really do a bad anything. time to have a fucking international pandemic and travel ban yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 it's like just as it was starting to sort of pop off yeah so it's going to be interesting yeah so I'm excited. Um, I really need to piss. Is there anything else we want to talk about? I got nothing. I mean, I got nothing. I, got I want to know I your future. Nothing. Yeah. What do you mean? Because we nearly we nearly dived into it. Earlier. Let me, let me go wee and you can you guys carry on. Because <coughs> fuck yeah. Because like don't go surfing after it rains. You'll get shit in your lungs. Really? Is that what yeah. is that what it is? So in California, because there's too many people and our drainage system sucks, when it rains, yeah. like a lot of like just gross shit just goes into the ocean and hangs out along the shore while like where you surf oh and i went surfing just too soon <laughs> and you reckon that's why yeah. oh i know it's why oh like, i know God. for a fact because i surfed and then the day before i left i was like feeling a little gro- like not i don't feel bad it's just my lungs i was like ooh, yeah ooh. do you end up swallowing loads of water no but yeah. if you swallow any like just you're gonna I mean, you're gonna wear a wave on the head a few times yeah and yeah like it's it's just a little bit of bacteria like a lot of pink eye is the most common one you just get pink eye <laughs> or like an ear that's infection that's so savage and I've never I've never gotten either of and I've done it before mm. I've never gotten sick until this time and I'm like of course nice course just as the comp yeah. no, like I, I, said, I don't feel sick I just have like a <laughs> yeah yeah no I want, I want to know your future because like you, you so do I so do I <laughs> I don't know dude but like with with parkour specifically like obviously you have you're doing stuff with June Shine and yeah. and all of that, but like specifically within parkour, the plans. Yeah, the plans. Um, You've got the plans. What are the plans? I have hopes. You know, what's your hopes? I mean, I'd like to keep competing. Um, I would like it to be like a lot less mentally draining mm. to compete and like having to like basically just journeyman your way. So. I think competing is definitely not gonna, not necessarily taking the back seat, but it was like my sole thing for so long. Um, and I'm realizing now I'm like, I'm 25, I'm surrounded by like one competitors, like in other sports, but like artists too. Mm-hmm. And I've never been a good artist. And I've always told myself my whole life, I'm like, oh, I'm not an artistic person. I'm not like blah, blah, blah. I don't care. And I'm like, I, I do. Like, I want to mm. create something, you know? Like, I really, really badly want to create something that. Not like, oh, I'm going to leave it behind for future generations, but just create something that, like, other people can get stoked on, mm. you know, other than, like, an Instagram clip. Yeah. So I'm going to be talking. I mean, I already spoke with him a little bit, um, and I've been talking with Kent Johns for a long time about making that, that yeah. like, short documentary. And then there is another thing in the works that I don't know how much I should say, um, but they made my favorite parkour video in history. Um, and then they made another really good parkour video that blew up and now we're going to start working on the U S version of that. Um, I'm really excited Ooh. about it. It's me and 
we don't know actually what other athletes are going to be in it but mm. i've been like wanting to do it for a while and then myself and noah from north street boogie reached out to them and we're like hey would we have your blessing to do this and they're like yeah Oh, that's so sick! Oh, so you actually reached out? Oh yeah, no, we got the we got the go ahead to start filming. Oh, sick! Yeah, they're busy as hell, so they can't like they're like we can't work on it right now. Yeah. So I was like, well, yeah, let's just start getting clips of summer. And sick. I'm I'm excited. I've been like finding stuff in San Diego that would be like that would be hench. That would yeah, be hench, yeah. You know? so oh. The scout. Scout that's starting. good when you start getting a little project going as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing is, I haven't d I've never done like a film project. And mm. I've always like. I feel like every time I go out to train, like I don't think about Instagram clips. I think about like, or when I'm like flying out here, I'm thinking about like, imagine like an edit, like imagine the B roll I could get mm -hmm. of like hanging out with all the boys or like, I just always like almost get emotional like thinking about like imagine doing like a long form project and just creating something that you, one you can be proud of, mm. and two, you share with other people that are going to resonate with it. And I mean, you guys both have experience doing that, and I've always loved the stuff you guys make, you know. So I was like, all right. Let's do it. It is nice. Competition feels great for like a week after, and then you're bummed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're yeah. Just back on it, you know. So it'll the, probably the downside the about the the content thing is, yeah, you feel great about it, and then it yeah, always week, fades. It's and also it's like ah, could have changed that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Could have. But like, the best thing is they just stick around. Yeah, I'll forget about them, and then I'll rewatch them, and it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, even yeah. though they're kind of no one watches them anymore, it's like for you, it just means so much. Yeah, really when nice. you make like a really good one, I mean, how many videos like. I've watched the original Capstone like 10 times. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. You know? I mean, I've watched Spinning in the Wind a few times. Like those like <laughs> big videos that like really have any, like quality control I've watched five times. Yeah. You know, and it's like people do watch, people go back and watch that shit all the time. I mean, how many times have most people watched Roof Culture? Yeah. And I mean, I'm not. And it's, I mean, we've said video, the, What I'm working on is not going to be Roof Culture, but like. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think video age, like ages that much whereas no. how many people have gone back and watched the 2018 speed finals at napc no one true <laughs> you know mm. and also like it's the, the, we've said it a lot on here but it's it's impossible to scroll down an instagram clip like uh, instagram yeah. feed to mm. find like some relevant thing like some big some big impactful thing yeah. like Le lilu jumping manpower incredible already out of the news cycle out of the news cycle and also like i mean she might have filmed additional content there might be a little documentary or youtube i don't know but like it's that kind of thing where it's like it yes put the clip on instagram because that's where you're going to get the the virality are, yeah. and like she was on the news and loads of stuff but it's like the 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 complimentary youtube video documentary whatever would be so much better to find for like a year's time it's yeah. like oh i want to see lilu jump it oh i know it's in this really nice piece do yeah. i have to watch the full thing i could just skip to that bit or i could watch the full thing yeah. like mm. It's but in a year's time, good luck going back and finding her Instagram. Clip just scroll, right? scroll, scroll. Yeah, yeah exactly. Especially because people were like daily posting and all that. Yeah, shit. Well, it's like it's also like trying to find like if I find like a funny TikTok and I'm like in bed like dying laughing, and then the next day I try to go and find it, and show it to a friend. No idea. Yeah, so there's no way to look it up. <laughs> you just have to try and explain it. Yeah, <laughs> and they're like, "Oh yeah, I've seen that." I'm like, "Wasn't it so funny?" They're like, "Yeah, it was really funny." Yeah, like the uh, doesn't hit. <laughs> <laughs> just doesn't hit. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean that's all I got. That's all I got, bro. That's all I got, bro. Um, yeah, thank I'm, you guys for having me. Really appreciate it. That is absolutely yeah, fine. I'm fucking. Man. Um, it's it's nice because it's like you're leaving now, but then I will still see you for the next. Yeah, I'm gonna come. I'm, I was while. gonna go to Lisbon, and now I'm just like I think I'm just gonna hang out in Brighton. Fucking stay. <laughs> Brighton is aggressive. Bristol. Brighton or Bristol? <laughs> yeah. I will. I will. <laughs> but I'll see you. I'll see you Sunday. Place. I don't think I'll be around any other days apart from that. That's fine. But uh, you guys are gonna be up. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, right? Yeah, I'll be around yeah, the so whole weekend. So. Oh, yeah. Nice. I hope they have an open bar again because that was so sick last time. Mm -hmm. We had the open bar and people just got rowdy. Yeah. Every, oh. time, every time a team got knocked out, they were just like... Mate, stop. straight to the bar. Last time, last time <laughs> it was, was so aggressive. Like, I loved it. I have a clip on my phone of... Uh, Sketchy Andy like getting bodied like he f he. Oh, the, are you talking about the UK championship? Or yeah, the yeah, yeah. Worlds? No, the UK one. The and what well, the dive to the? I'm filming. Game. I think Which it's the dive. dive. He did like two or three. Yeah, it's one of them. And Chris from Breach is like next to me, and you just hear him going "fuck you, Andy!" Like so, like proper football hula going like that's "fuck so you," good, and the whole crowd's like just screaming. I love that shit, man. That's it's, like that's as far as competition goes like that's the real it's so I good like. yeah that's what i go for it's so good so hopefully it gets rowdy yeah i mean yeah by the time we so anyone listening to this this will come out just after chase tag 
we've, as you probably would have seen, we've done a podcast with uh, Chris Grant from Parker UK, which is talking about some important stuff there, um, which is why that one had to come out on that day. But yeah, thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Everything. Um, what's all the official shit we're meant to plug? Buy some clothes, please. Uh, get them. Get them, yeah. Get them on their hat. If you're Pro- in the US, check out June Shine. June Shine, yeah. yeah. June. Sample it for me because I'd love That's to taste Hume. it. Oh, I have a code. Uh, Davis10 for 10% off. There you go. Well, for June Shine, okay. Uh, for Hume. Hume, nice. Don't have it for June Shine yet. Okay. Someday. For your, your discounted deodorant. Um, and yeah. Oh, if you're in San Diego in June, um, come by the San Diego tasting room on the 11th for our fourth birthday. And the Santa Monica tasting room on the 18th for our fourth birthday. Nice. It's going to pop off. Nice. DJs and stuff. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, pay women equally. Yeah, pay, mm. pay women equally. Yeah. Or else. Or else. Or else I won't go to your comp. There we go. Hopefully other people won't either. <laughs> Love you lots. Bye. 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 Oh! You blew it! Oh. How long is that?